on my birthday, I became a regular at the store. Fuck yeah. That's, wow. 20 years, I'll be a regular in fucking... Uh, Three weeks, huh? How many times did you get in front of her? Did it twice. just take twice? First time, did she say anything like, no? Nah, or... You have 10 minutes, come back next oh. week. And I remember coming to the store, had mm-hmm. my references, and they said, it's a six-week backlog. Mm-hmm. Like six, six, seven, sometimes four or five months. Okay, I accepted it. Friday they called and said, let's been two cancellations. You in? I was in. Three minutes to come back and do ten. You're a regular. Fat baby. Fat baby. Oh, God. No, I still have pictures took, of lineups of yeah, Fat Baby. It took like three years for her to start calling me Fat Baby. <laughs> Ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. The Church of What's Happening Now is presented by On It. This show is brought to you by MVMT Watches. MVMT Watches makes minimalist products at revolutionary prices. With over 500,000 watches sold, check out, get yours today. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash church to get 15% off with free shipping and free returns. That's mvmtwatches.com slash church. This show is also brought to you by Helix Sleep. Go to helixsleep.com where you can buy mattresses online customized for you for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. Go to helixsleep.com slash joey right now to get $50 off of your order. That's helixsleep.com slash joey. Show is also brought to you by CISO. Stream all the comedy you want anytime, anywhere for only $3.99 a month. CISO is the comedy you crave. Go to CISO.com and enter promo code joey right now to get one month for free. That's CISO.com, promo code joey. Oh, shit. Kick that mule leaf. Kick that motherfucker. <laughs> it's Monday, baby. It's January 30th, cocksuckers. Mm-hmm. We're taking this muffler to the hoop tonight. Deep in the murky waters. Oh, shit. Steve Ren is easy. Fuck yeah, Joey. The Flying Jew and Uncle Joey. This is the fucking Shankler's guitar. He's fuck. That German is fucking killing that guitar. Oh shit. Bam, bam. Oh shit, just when you thought it was safe and you were out of the woods, the big bad wolf is back, bitch. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? I missed you. It was a great long weekend with the family. I didn't see Lee Syatt this weekend at all. He they had him in seclusion over there in Laurel Canyon. <laughs> oh, the wife sick. sucked him in Friday. He was done. Oh. He was eating stars over there, getting stories about attorneys and shit. Oh. They were setting presidents at his house. It was all over. Oh, it was uh I'm I g I got nervous taking stars with uh with cold medicine. Oh, Nothing that's happened the whole this party. time. That's the whole <laughs> listen, you popped uh, I think a little half a glass of NyQuil with some rocks. Oh my god. A couple fucking rocks with a taste of fucking gin in that motherfucker. <laughs> and you eat two stars, the fucking flu goes away. <laughs> There's a thing my old father in law used to make. As soon as you got sick, as soon as you said I don't feel good. He would put like brandy. Hot toddies, right? No, no, something Polish like brandy and honey and lemon juice and paprika and fucking Ugh. celery sticks and fucking. It tasted terrible, but you did one shot. First of all, you lasted like 20 minutes after that. You went down, down. I don't care who the fuck you are. <clears throat> I don't care how much crystal meth you have in you. You're going <laughs> down from this drink. I would just drool and shit. And then, uh, 
I never had it again. I don't know what the fuck it's called. And then he used to call it something Polish. And it just knocked the shit right out of you? Knocked the shit right out of you. Fuck yeah. Listerine. And it was, had everything was in there. It was like four ounces. It I had that down. neurovirus over Christmas. It was terrible. Where'd you get it from? I, I got it from, I think, one of the, I did a show up in Syracuse at that Funny Bone. You know, you meet and greet after. I think one of the savages up there gave it to me. You know, handshake. By the time I got home, it's fine. Two days later, I'm out to dinner with Ari. I go home. I start to throw up. I text him. I go, is this, you feel bad? He goes, no. So I'm like, fuck, I got it. Just out the ass, the mouth, the whole thing. Then everyone else down the line gets it. It was terrible. People have no idea how sick you get from traveling every week if you let it get you. And if you get sick one week and you have like two weeks after that, by the time you get back, you got full-on bronchitis and soft pneumonia. I always tell you people that I learned from other comics. You know what I learned? I saw him get sick all the time, Ralphie May. In the beginning, Mm -hmm. he would get sick all the time. Guess what he was doing? Smoking a pipe with people. Yeah. And every week, you go into these different areas, and he was getting this jungle rot out of his lungs. He ended up in the hospital. Fuck. I love smoking weed, but I tell you what, if I got like a busy week, like if I'm shooting something, Mm -hmm. I don't smoke weed with people on the road. I can't take the fucking chance because they don't give a fuck. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about your life. They give a fuck about going to the show and meeting you. And I don't blame them, but you have to consider if you had bronchitis for three fucking weeks. Yeah. And you come to the show, don't smoke a joint with me, dog. Don't smoke a joint with eight people. Don't pass a pipe around. You know better than that. I know. They just don't want to lose the experience. After the three hits, then they cough from the bronchitis. And and then they look at you and they go, I had bronchitis for three weeks. And you're like, fucking thank you, you fuck. Now I'm not going to smoke with nobody because of you. Because all it needs is one bad apple to spoil a whole bunch. Especially of joints. Yeah, joints. Balls, are, no. you can kind of... I, I don't mind doing it in front of people when you kind of burn the burn ends. Burn the ends and shit. But no, yeah, this but you're mother- still in it. You Listen, know, if you- would you trust me? I eat fucking chicks. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I don't trust nobody. No, so that's smoke true. A pipe yeah. with somebody? There was a girl I smoked a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, how many dicks has this chick sucked the last <laughs> month? I'm, over here. I'm a dick sucker by proxy just from smoking <laughs> from this fucking thing. <laughs> What's yeah. up, Lisa? At? Oh, my God. I, I feel like I'm already going through change. I don't know what those fucking uh, chocolates do. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. I saw him sweat in his head. <laughs> yeah, dude. He took off his jacket. Oh, oh my God. I don't know. You Because guys... you know why? Because this is why. You fuck around no, I'm not, every I, weekend. I, I... I tell you to go deep on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> You're in training and you fuck around. Steve, I did 1,150 milligrams. 1,100 is nothing. Oh, this I, is 1,500 we're doing tonight. <laughs> right? And this is like watching Michael Phelps and, and his trainer. Yeah, <laughs> He's like, this we're doing this. So many laps listen, we're doing yeah, this week. Yeah, we're doing this all the fucking time. What a, but you on the weekend, you fuck around, you, you, you yeah, get you're soft. Yeah, you doing your shit. Hey, you have to take another star now. That, that's another that, star, all right. Sure. Well, a penalty of star, a star penalty. It's a star <laughs> penalty for fucking around this weekend instead of training. Oh, I ate everything. I even ate the 50 milligram stars I had this weekend. <laughs> I had like 10 blue ones in the drawer that were older than fuck. Gummy, you had a fucking... <laughs> How did I catch? He just threw it at me and I caught it. It landed right on him. Oh, my God. Stuck to him. Dog, he's like fucking, uh, (laughs) what's that guy when we were kids? The receiver from Oakland? Less than a molester. (laughs) He used to spray himself down with that spray (laughs) before the NFL. Slippery, whatever that did. No, the shit sticks to him. Oh, the stick him stuff. Oh, my God, Lee, this guy. (laughs) Put a video on. Less than a molester. Yeah. Then the ball would like... Stick right to him. I think it stuck to his helmet one time. <laughs> that was it. That was like, dog, you got to stop it. What should I search? Lester the Molester? No, Lester Hayes. Was it like that pine tar stuff? The stuff that George Brett went nuts about? All over his shirt? A couple years ago. He, when can't the best, even, he doesn't even know how to work the computer right when now. The ba- <laughs> when the best dance sports show was on, Rich Williams, great kid. Remember Rich Williams? Yeah. Good writer. Nice yep. kid from Syracuse, as mm-hmm. a matter of fact. George Brett came on the show and they wrote a sketch. Of me and George Brent, what really happened? And it was me in the dugout eating a Sunday with hot fudge, and it went all over the bat. That was the pine tar. <laughs> okay. so it was me. He was a good dude too. Yeah, really laughing about. So funny how I started on that show with those guys. They contacted me. The pay was garbage, but it was enjoyable. Like I got to meet Sugar Ray Leonard. They dressed me up like Roberto Duran, <laughs> and then like go down there and insult him. And Sugar Ray Leonard, he's been punched in the head eighteen times. He couldn't fucking tell. At oh, first, you Jesus. could see he was looking at me going, is this really Roberto? What the what fuck the happened fuck? to him? 
Lee, what's going on over there? It's right here. Here we go. Watch how he played. Like, stick him. Yeah, this was it. This was, this is crazy shit, people. For people who don't know, it was like a, a thing that you sprayed on you. This is a fucking movie, oh, Lee. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, people. This is what I'm talking about. Man. Lester Hayes, she, please. She, I'm she putting Lester Hayes. Look. No, Lester fucking Hayes, please. This Falco. You see Hayes there? There's got to be a Lester fucking Hayes here. I'm telling you. I'm watching Lester Hayes right there. Most intimidating Raiders, right? So I'll, I'll put it on top. There it is. Watch this, Lee Sayed. You're going to fucking learn something. See what I'm saying? This is my life. Yeah, but they're not going to show like the like, stick'em catches in the most intimidating Raiders part. Well, what do you think they're going to show? They're going to show. Look at the, look at this guy. Look at the <laughs> just looking at him, you'd be scared, Lee. What happened to the video? What happened to the screen? The TV's stolen. <laughs> That's a nice stolen TV, though. That's you nice gotta stolen. say, you're gonna nice steal truck. one. Look at him. Look at him. Look at, look at, yeah, look at, look at this <laughs> shit on his ankles, Lee. <laughs> Lee, you know what that is? Look at how he would intercept. Well, he was a great athlete. Yeah, he just he, he was a great athlete. No matter what, at everyone's hand. Look at his hands. The stickums all over the people's hands. But look at him. He was a great athlete. The stickum helped him just a little bit. Like if a ball got hit and it threw up in the air and it would land on his shoulder, that's how the stickum was shouldn't have been. They say those gloves now that they wear now, Odell Beckham, they're, the, they're basically made of stickum. Yeah, that's, the black ones, I mean, the black leather big, ones that you put on. Yeah. yeah. They're so shiny and shit. When I used to work at the Puddle Car Wash in Boulder, those guys, somebody at that university was just robbing those gloves <laughs> by the boxes. I must have had 20 of those pairs of boxes at the gloves at the house. <laughs> Not boxes, I'm sorry. 20 of those gloves. And they were like those black gloves yeah. that the receivers, receivers wear. Were, yeah. Everybody at the car wash wore them. <laughs> And the fucking people from the university would come there and go, why does everybody, did we pay for these? <laughs> university like, of Denver all over the fucking. No, Boulder. Boulder, yeah. Boulder. So Boulder had them, and they had them like in home colors, I think, like black and gold. I don't know. Like if they saw you with like the gold ones, people would say, don't let them see you with the gold ones. <laughs> but in those days, that's how those students, that's how those football players made a living. Yeah. They stole shit and sold them. Memorabilia, statues. What were you using them for the car wash, though? What do you mean? Well, like, why you got to keep you your hand. You got to keep your hands dry. Dry, so you would uh, wipe rags, the cars yeah. down, and and then just to be cool, if you were standing like me, I was a fucking salesman at the car wash. I was <laughs> yeah. no fucking. I, I had dried windows for about a week, <laughs> and that was it. That was a horrible job. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. That, I got that job like November twenty eighth, and I kept that job till like fucking January tenth, and then right before the Super Bowl. I got indoors at a, a detail body shop, but I was at the puddle out there. Oh, I started. It's cold, too. <clears throat> and I had a license, and they wouldn't let me drive. Like they, Why? There was a kid they paid just to drive. To pull the was, cars out, put them into spots. So right, you can set and up. he was Mr. Cool. He had the, the, yeah. the hat. Like Everybody knew who he was. He had Did you have to crack walk. him off pieces of your tips? Uh, fuck that. I would steal tips. <laughs> Anybody who gave me money, I belong to me, bitch. <laughs> if I saw you out there with two bucks and a ticket, I'd work my angle. So I was right there. Oh, thank you. Sometimes I put a dollar in. Sometimes I keep a dollar. You know, <laughs> you know. There was always an angle there. That that was a sad thing. There was always everybody was fucking stealing from that Fish place. Through. That place must have made millions of dollars because when I was a kid and I worked there, I found out shit that everybody was robbing that place. It's amazing. Dude, go, their Nothing. car washes are are a really great business to just f make money. Oh, it's a cash business. It's yep. a cash cow. My friends yep. had one in Hoboken when I was growing up. It's a cash cow. You know, yeah. and if you get it, the salesman is the whole thing. Really? That guy at the window. When See, the ones around here, those guys, why would you hire these Mexican dudes if they can't speak Which English? one do you want? Yeah, yeah. They uh, give, so you give me the regular. Give me deal. You sure you don't deal. want the... 1695, dog. I would work you to pe for pieces. Four extra bucks, you get the whole yeah. tires Listen, done. Listen, dog, I'm going to give yeah. you the car wash. And I'm gonna, the, the, the basic car wash is, is shit. It's 695. I'm going to charge you 695 for the basic car wash. But I'm also going to do this. I'm going to throw the wax in. I'm going to throw the air rust inhibitor, which was nothing. <laughs> rust inhibitor is like fucking Whatever piss. the spray that they spray yeah, out is. under the car <laughs> to shield it against salt and rock. Yeah. I'm going to spray stuff on your rims. I'm going to arm roll it in, in and out nice. I'm going to try. You know, I would work them. Mm -hmm. Let me throw in this. Let me throw in that because you figured out what costs nothing. What costs nothing. You know, I yeah. went to the boss one day. I go, let me ask you a question. What can I throw in here and make people No, feel no. I didn't even ask them because they're too stupid. Yeah, they're still going. They're still working in the seventies. Mm -hmm. I had them show them Joey Diaz style. 
You know what I'm saying? Joey Diaz style is taking it from a different perspective. You know, when you sell cars and when you sell cars in Denver, Colorado, you go for gross. What is gross? The amount over the invoice. You know, if the sticker says twenty thousand and we own the car for seventeen five, I make a living off me making you believe that that car's worth twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. If I sell you that car correctly, you're gonna get for a little discount just to let your friends know. But if I sell that car correctly to you, and I, and if I show you the lighters and, and I take an hour with the bell, look at this blinker. <laughs> this is worth two thousand right here. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. if you sell the car with value, you could. Uh, uh, make gross in New York. It's such a whore town. When I worked, I didn't work for the Potamkins. The Potamkins were the thieves in New York City. But there was these <laughs> little, yeah, the Potamkins. You know that. Yeah, Whenever yeah, you open yeah. up the Daily News, yep. Potamkin always got a Cadillac yep. on special. One ninety nine down, one ninety nine a month. Wait till you get there. You leave there with three hundred a month and a fucking beating the black eye. You were there for eighteen hours. Your mother bought a car. They use your son's social. <laughs> they don't give a fuck over there at Potampo. At least that was how it was twenty years ago. That's where you went to work yep. when you wanted to make money and not have a soul. There was a lot of those <laughs> places. Douglas Toyota. When I worked at Douglas Toyota, listen, in 87, 88, 90, 91, there were salesmen making twelve grand a month. These guys were making eight bucks an hour. People like twelve grand a month, Joey. I make that selling shoot. Yeah, listen, these guys would either be robbing people or making eight bucks an hour. Yeah, they're making twelve thousand a month now. Those guys have no conscience. They yes, you did that, then they give you to a closer. That's the place to sell, Douglas. If knowing what I know now, I'd be, anybody who's twenty one call me. Go to Douglas if it's still line of closer. <sighs> Really? You just get them wet and you, you got hand no them over responsibility. Stuff. How you doing, Steve? What's happening? Boom, boom, what are you looking at? I'm looking at the Toyota selling. I really enjoy it. Listen, let's do it. Let me ask you a question. Are we going to buy a car today? Are you shopping? Well, I have to. No, 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 no. Before I put you in the car, are you considering? Because I'm going to work hard for you. I'm going to fight this fucking. This guy here, this is Trump's nephew. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go in and hit him with a stick. No protesting. Don't tell nobody. You take him for the ride, you bring him back. Bye bye. In New York, you don't make money from that. You make money from accessories and financing. Oh, the up packages and stuff? The, the rims, the fucking the thi- uh, alarms. The things that come out on the sides yes. you get into. Alarms, the things oh, on the side. I bought and a, the TVs in the back. They give you a taste of financing in New York. Yeah. Which they, a lot of people They want the do, whole package. So they want you to sell financing from the jump. How yep. are you going to pay for this, Steve? Some credit union. What's the rate of your credit union? Oh, I'm f- sure we work with 100 bucks. If your credit is solid, <laughs> I know 100 people. We, we work with 100 banks. Yeah, 100 banks. I put one fucking button in now, and it's like utopia. It's like if you want a hooker and you press a button now, yeah. I'm 22 fucking hookers will pop up <laughs> on your computer. Same thing. I got 100 fucking banks. And you tell them to give you your rate. You're going to lie, and I'm going to lie. You're going to say, you, it's 9, but you're going to yeah. say, yeah, about 8.5. I'll beat it. What if I got you eight today, right now, with the low down payment, let you keep a thousand, use it for your son's fucking football team, give it to the nun, let her show you a little <laughs> nunly pussy, whatever the fuck it is. Oh my God. <laughs> the nunly pussy, that's it's a new a, one? It's, yeah, it's a nun, nun's pussy. So you made money pussy. off a uh, percentage of that shit. So how, God damn. so how do you make money if you're the, the before the closer? Like if do you have to? They have to sell the car, or are you just getting paid just for doing that? Okay, the closer for the closer to come in, you have to get a commitment. Oh, okay, what's gotcha. the commitment? Steve? I'm gonna buy this car. I just yeah, Steve. So like, you want to do three hundred a month? Boom. Uh, I really didn't say I want. Like okay, two seventy is what I really want to do. But two thousand. All I gotta do is this. I gotta get you the down payment you want, the price on your trade. That you want. That's all I got to do. You get me paper. that, and then we'll work yeah. this car. And then, sign, he'll, and then he'll... You I have it. you sign all four boxes. I get a credit card from you, and I bring it to a closer. I wish this fucking animal luck. And I sick him to a guy who's been beating women for the last 30 <laughs> years of his life. <laughs> Two divorces. Yes, eight divorces. He doesn't That's really... That's eighth in his softball team. Yeah, he fucking, fucking hates six himself. rehabs. <laughs> robbed one of them at gunpoint. <laughs> This guy comes in and just torments you to death. Before, I mean... And then he brings you to... You need the gas and go package? I got the gas and go package. And then he brings you a chick that does the whole introduction to the car. So you already sold another car. You're a king. By the time that guy goes to F&I and then to the uh, 
they call in those days they had girls hot girls that would show you everything about your car mm -hmm. explain the lease or the the payment plan who you paid it to yep. they don't have that anymore yes they do well not at the volkswagen and, and panorama city they well don't. <laughs> because it's very to, when you have that last customer service rep they make sure that you listen to how select these dealers are they make sure that when you get your customer rating you bring it back to them and let them fill it out and i not only buy you a tank of gas but i also throw those rims you like that <laughs> Because that's the most important thing. The customer service index is the most important thing and the most important thing to white people. Because if white yeah. people go on there and they see your customer service index is down, they don't do business with you. Wait, this Certain is Yelp. white people this is Yelp. Will not this is before no, Yelp. No, this is before, before Yelp. Yelp. It was almost like, what was that service? The just, business, business, consumer business. Yeah, this was they before would look Yelp. Up. No, 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 no. And they still got it now. When you buy a car, a dealer will send you a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Because that score... Let you know how whether you'll get certain cars. If you treat your customers shitty, they ain't gonna send you all the, the cars shit, you yeah. want. They're gonna give you a shitty fucking allotment of cars. They're gonna send you red cars and orange cars, convertibles, <laughs> the lime green one. No yeah, one wants. that nobody fucking wants. So uh, that's that. You have to have a high customer rating now, man. You really do. It's got to be like extraordinary. When I do business with this Subaru, they go above and beyond. That's Jesus. why I've gotten four cars from them. I'm on my fourth or fifth or sixth car from the Valley right there. Yeah. Like Van Nuys. Bruce, he comes to my shows. He calls, you know. That's why. I just call him and go, I'm coming up. When? Thursday at 3. Have <laughs> a there, car yeah. ready for me. Let's He's do there. It. Boom. I walk in. No down payment. Because I just go from lease to lease to lease. Yeah. I'm an American dog. When I, start, <laughs> when I sold cars, I learned more about life than anything ever. You know, when you, there's certain companies you work with that you tell them. I'm going to pay this down payment one time, but I'm going to get one of these every three years. Yeah. I'm just coming in. I'm going to call you at one. I'm going to pick the car up at four. It's washed. It's filled with gas. <laughs> I signed four papers. That's what happened. I'll see in three years. After a while, they'll know. You just tell them. Yeah. That's how I want to do business. Listen, whatever, and now you're a, you're a valued customer. You're always going to get a lease from them every fucking three years. You're going to go to their service department, you know. You're going to work it. They work with you, bro. I've always bought cars. <coughs> I've never leased a car. No, 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 no more. That ends. That ends now. Can no, you write off a lease a little bit on your taxes? You could, a ton of shit because <laughs> I'm, t I'm making you pay for what you drive. Yeah. Why are you paying for the whole thing? Look what's going on with society today. Look what's going on with my man here. Ever since I've known my man, mm -hmm. He's broke it down for me, and then between him and my other brother, they'll fucking sit you down and talk you 22 ways why you have to cut cable today. Yeah. And what the scam is and what the source they do, they cut it all the way down. They got Chinese. Lee's got Chinese cable <laughs> that's got stolen from the Israelis, <laughs> and it gets shipped to New Jersey, okay? And then he gets, like, HBO Go for $3 a month. He gets the ESPN yeah. package with his little fucking things. Mm -hmm. No HBO. He doesn't need it. Ask him. That's the today's America. These I know. kids are watching TV for twenty five dollars a month, and there's Americans still paying a hundred dollars. That's cable. me though. I'm the American. Me too. My dad's me too. on my password. I'm a I get on Hulu off. sometimes. I go, who's watching the Sneaky Pete's without me? How good is it? My dad. I'm. I just one in, but my dad's like, I could. I go. You gotta go back to the one that I was on. It's one account. You can't just keep moving. He's five ahead. My entire family is on my all my accounts too. My, yeah, my, I'm, my mom watches like Gilmore Girls. I'm like, who's watching Gilmore? This Girls? This kid Girls? eliminated the cost of yeah. his television. Yeah, okay. Done. So the same. I'm paying 180 bucks a month. Okay. Dude, I, I, I'm a nerd. I love TV. I, I when I first got a TV in my room because I wasn't allowed to in, through my entire life. I didn't sleep. I had ESPN, the Sports Center, the bars on the left. I had it burned into my TV because it was. I would just have it on all night. And I haven't had cable for about two and a half years. It was so still, it, you haven't. I haven't had. I haven't had cable. I've had Netflix. I have uh, Cody a little bit, but not really even that much. I have uh, Amazon, CISO for some specials, and uh, and then a lot of the other stuff you can just buy on on demand now. Well, like, you you lease what depreciates, and you own what appreciates. So whatever loses money, why would you buy it? I buy twenty thousand for a car. I go down the corner; it's worth eighteen already. Now I just got twenty G's in this fucking car. Okay, then you have the option of financing. If you have great credit, you go down and put a percentage down, 
and get like a, a cheap union rate or something, six points, and you can save money that way to build your credit or whatever. Mm -hmm. But after a while, and I learned this selling cars, you want the most car for the least amount of money. When I used to pencil people, which means when I go to my manager for Steve Run is Easy, yeah. if Steve told me that if he kept saying 250 two fifty, like the best deal ever, like as an American to fucking my brother, <laughs> like if my mother came to me in 1989, 90 in that time and said to me, Papa, what kind of car would you hook me up with? Nissan at one time had a deal on the medium car. What's that rocket ship in the middle? Altima? Altima? No. Cor bigger than that one. The one Maxima? Yeah. Yeah. What that Maxima? Nissan Maxima. The Nissan okay. Altima. Maxima. It's uh, when I was fucking selling cars, they had a deal that you could only unless you're fucking stupid, you wouldn't go down there. First of all, when you would buy a car, you own the car for five years. Not the five years. Then you own the fucking car. Mm -hmm. So for five years the bank owns that fucking note. By the time you own that car, you don't even want that fucking car no more. It smells like your asshole. Your ex-girlfriend used to blow you in the car. <laughs> She's not with another guy. You know, it, it's ridiculous. But now we have mm -hmm. so much invested that we want the most out of this car. In our mind, this car is worth all this money. And then we go try to sell it, and it ain't worth that. Nothing. Now we're stuck with that fucking car. Listen, as an American, you want to trade your car in every three years. Every three years. 15000 a, a year. Bam, I don't do no more driving to 15000 a year no more. Do I you? Do no, not no. really. Since when? That, our driving days are over. Well, San Diego was the only That's place it. we drive to. I don't go to San Francisco. No I more. No, you fly to San Francisco. So, so, yeah. you, so if you keep your mileage low, why buy when you can rent? That's all a lease is. So now, instead of you paying four fifty a month, I'm going to give you the same car for 300 a month. For 36 motherfucking months. You know the 4000 you would have had to put down to get that number? Put twenty five hundred back in your pocket. Just give me fifteen hundred dollars down. Really? And in three years, you I'm come in it. here and fucking get another three. Talk to your accountant. It may not work for you, but Abe Lincoln, the great Abe Lincoln, said, "Lease what appreciates, <laughs> and, and no, own what appreciates, <laughs> and lease, lease what, what depreciates. depreciates." Fuck yeah, Abe Lincoln. What the fuck you think you're doing here? That was his, So here's my. That's question. why I come to the church. I well, I've been leasing. This is my second lease. And both times I've paid for the extra miles. Water? Please, thank you. I've paid for the extra miles, and 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 you never get it. Well, I got close mo uh, mostly, but now I live so close to where I am most of the time. I think I did under ten thousand last year. So like, but then someone was telling. But you me, fuck up because this fucking guy gets a call from them. This is how they get you. They get these fucking dudes. They call him after the lease is two years old. And they say, come down, we got too much inventory, give us your car. Well, I still got a year. And you go down, that's why they fuck with the numbers. I don't fuck oh, with the numbers. Oh, really? Yeah, I wait the three years. You drop the car off. Then now, I got it so good, I dropped the car off. Okay? They cut me a check for the miles. And when I get a, check, a bill from Subaru, I send them that check. You know how many bills I've gotten from Subaru? Really? Dog, it, it pays to be loyal with one company. That's it. <clears throat> I don't care if it's BMW. You yeah. lease a BMW, the shitty one, the three, just because you want to be cool. It's dirt cheap. That's why you see thousands of fucking BMWs. Because people go down there and go, I want to buy a BMW. And all of a sudden they go, you know what the number is on that? It's this every month. It's, it's a small nickel. You know what I'm saying? Plus you're 21. All right? You're 21. What do you think insurance is going to bang you? That's another G bo a month. You're paying fucking 16 just to drive the car. Why are you killing yourself? Though? I know. I, Do me a favor. My dad a always bought the cars and then he would give yeah, them down to the kids and stuff. And that's what's my school. We're old school my kids people. aren't going to want these fucking cars. No. Every three years, you got a new fucking I rocket know. ship. What am I, my kid, yeah. And when your kid's ready for a thing, you put them on a scooter. You know, fuck <laughs> it. You put them on one of those Italian scooters <laughs> with a fucking helmet. A little Vespa. Yeah, a little Vespa. <laughs> bam, bam, beeping at people, cutting people <laughs> off. Hammer hanging out. How is it being a dad and balancing your career? It's, I mean, it's tough. Um, What's the longest you've been away from? A month. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Where'd you go? I did a movie in Shreveport for, th it was like th three and a half weeks. Was, yeah. Tw three weeks. At this yeah, point. 20, day 20 days. 20 this is the worst. Two days. It was tough. 
at this point in my life, I think it's four days. And I, yeah. I think it's four days, and I would lose it without it. Just, I think if I came to it right now and I was like, hey, I got something, a movie that shoots in London, for ten, they need me for 10 days. I think 10 days would be okay. Two weeks would get like an eye roll. Like I remember going on the road for six weeks in a row. I leave Thursday, and I come back Sunday. Yeah. Like there's a Nick game I want to go see. Yeah. And take one of my boys in the city. Mm -hmm. We grew up together, you know, take him, go from Kalamata, yeah. Rudy's and shit. <laughs> yep. Smoke a few joint, give him a few stars, mm -hmm. and take him to the fucking Nick Oh, game, that's perfect. To the garden, you know. But that means I got to be away from them for a whole week. Yep. I can still train jiu-jitsu Tuesday and Wednesday. I go to Nyack. How is that club? The Levity Live? Yeah. Nice. It's in the mall. It's the mall. You How's know? the whole everybody thing cool? How it's close to the thing? Down the, down the, it's a highway in between, so it's like two exits off the highway. You know what that, uh, it's right by the Tappan Zee Bridge. That's the one thing. I don't know if you're going to drive there from taking JFK, but drive up, you see that, you drive over the new Tappan Zee Bridge almost. It's right next to it. The Tappan Zee Bridge <clears throat> was one of the worst bridges. Well, they just rebuilt it. In the fucking country. They were scared for years. Yeah. For Pieces years. Of falling People off. living in fear going over that fucking thing. No one ever told me this. I went over the Tappan Zee Bridge. I saw, the, doc oh, I saw yeah. the documentary a few years ago. They, so they built a new one right next yeah. to it. So they're almost, they're done with it. So then they're going to blow up the Tappan Zee. But when I was a kid, I don't know. <sighs> We used to get on 9W uh -huh. and stop by The Henry Dracula. Hudson Parkway? Is it that? No, 9W on the Jersey side. So you okay. go up, uh, you go to Fort Lee, and you mm -hmm. go behind Fort Lee, kind of sort of, correct me people, you know it's been fucking 20-something yeah. fucking years. And you go up and you pass some car dealerships, you pass the old bicycle club, you pass like Englewood, uh, Mazda, and whatever, and you just keep going straight, and all of a sudden you get on the road, 9W, and you go up 9W, and 9W, you went, but Jesus Christ, you're worse Sorry. than fucking Ari Shafir and Mike Kessler. Uh, you went up there, and on Saturday nights, there was a place called the Cuckoo's Nest. We were seniors in high school. Uh huh. And we would get fucked up, do powder, and go, let's go for a ride. And four Puerto Ricans would get in the car, and we all shoot up to <laughs> the Cuckoo's Nest and shit. And I'll never forget the Hindu. He, the, this stuck. <laughs> <laughs> the dog guy was a Hindu with a wig. Like, you couldn't write this. You understand me? Not just the top piece. What kind of wig? Like, the wig. Like, oh, the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Like, this, like the sideburns. But it was a it was a 10G, 15G wig <laughs> in 1982. This thing was Persian. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, perfect. This was perfect fucking talk. beautiful. And he had a goatee. Mm -hmm. And he was very nice, you know, and... Uh, I had some weird, uh, Monday Night Football, they'd give you, you know, this is 1982, people, mm -hmm. 81. They'd give you uh, six beers for a dollar in a bucket. In a bucket. Filled with ice. You'd go up there on Monday nights, wings, Lee, you wings go up in halftime, right? Oh, wings all night. And those days, at Monday. Monday Night Football was nothing a thing. pisses me off more as this is how bad this country is. We lost Monday Night Football. I know, Joey, you've talked about it before. No, you don't. Monday Night Football was so strong. I know motherfuckers who got eight balls on Monday nights. My dad, well, hooker, not hookers, but strippers were coming at halftime. I'm t guys, I'm telling you, <laughs> you people who are... and strippers at halftime. I know motherfuckers that wouldn't go out on Friday. I know motherfuckers <laughs> that would get the schedule for Monday yeah. Night Football to plan their weekends. They take their wives out on Friday night. I'm going to give up. I don't mind going out Friday night. We're going out Friday night. But you know what? Can you just watch Monday night? I got to get a little early. So I got to bring some food. People got fired because of Monday night football. <laughs> the totals were insane. First of all, you stayed up to watch it. You know, if you're a kid in New England, you're 13. They're in the. Uh, it's the last game against the Jets, and they go to the playoffs. Lee Syed is staying up until <laughs> yeah. 1 in the morning yeah. watching overtime. Absolutely. The game starts at 9. Yeah. The game starts at 9 in New York. You know, that's what people in the 6 o'clock, we're so lucky. It starts at 6 here. I know. And by 9, we go out and do our <laughs> thing. Back there, you got to wait till 9 by 7.30. What about with baseball? And oh, Not to change the subject, but with baseball, when the East Coast team played a West Coast team and it started at 10.30 to 11 o'clock sometimes, oh a rain delay? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. When I was a kid, all those, like, when the Knicks played the Seattle, the Seattle Super Sonics. Sonics, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> yep. You, like, it would come on like a 10 to yeah. We're turning into WOR right now. Yep. <laughs> 
But month they lost. Month, I remember people eating quick. Lee, we would bar hop. Just to, we would go up there on Mondays. But my all time favorite was the place in Englewood Clinton. Englewood, not Englewood Cliffs. Something, Lee. It was a chain. And on Monday nights, they put meatballs out <laughs> and wings. <laughs> Dude, halftime bounties oh my are God, the best. Lee, you, if you got a, and all you had to do was get like a pitcher of beer, and they gave you like a knife, a fork, and a plate, Lee, and you just tore up wings for four quarters, endless. Blue, this was way before ranch was invented. Nobody used no. ranch in those days. It was straight up blue cheese. They had like a little salad which nobody touched. Nobody touched and that. And you would salad. go there, eat those wings with a with a gram of coke, burn the hole in your pocket. <laughs> this is your last meal for the next day and a half and shit. Fucking gold jackets. Oh my god, there'd be piles of wings. I just love that just to remind everyone in case we have any new <laughs> listeners, this is in high school. This isn't like Joey's just turning twenty one and in college. This is Joey in like sophomore year. Well, here it is. No, no, this is this started maybe my junior year. <laughs> I built these motherfuckers up. I can't remember the name, not bottom of the barrel. That was a, that was a mob bar. This was something else. It was a chain, and it was in the middle of this thing, and people going in, we could get wings. And Beef steak Charlie's? No, no, that was in New York City. <laughs> yeah, this I had, had sawdust on the floor. Yeah, that's, that's the same thing. This is the whole thing. Beef steak Charlie wasn't beef bad in those days. You'd stab the beef. Someone and called my note. mom a cunt at Beef steak Charlie's, yeah, and my dad hit him. <laughs> Beef steak Charlie <laughs> was my was trash. Called Mama oh, there was fucking fist fights in there. <laughs> oh the steak God. was always alive. Like <laughs> yeah. it made some type of noise. Well done. The baked matter. potato was older than fuck. But <laughs> that aluminum foil was from like 1910. <laughs> Pittsburgh wasn't even fucking on the map yet. Oh my God, that place stunk. But you know what, dog? For twenty bucks, you ain't like you a fucking doctor. That. You could bring your whole oh family. Oh my god! And for you were like you a get, savage. You get the buckets. Of, I never of, saw fist fights, but I did yeah. hear about fist in fights in the parking lot when they get crab legs out. <laughs> white people would go bananas in those what, days. What is like a discount steakhouse? Yeah, it was like a beef steak, Charlie. <laughs> oh know. my god! And the guy. <laughs> People say like stuff is bad now, but at least marketing's gotten better. Beef steak, beef Charlie's. steak Charlie's was the bomb. Ten Discount cent wings when we were in high school eatering. football, we'd go there. Oh my oh. god! Yeah, but I was just reading something today. Uh, I wasn't it's at reading for 2017. It was one of those slideshows, and they said they have like free food at a bunch of bars in in New York. Like you can just go in and with like every drink, you'll get a p- uh, like a slice of pizza. Really? Or on like Fridays, one place has like a wing buffet, and I never see that anywhere. Like, th- th- do you remember that? I know you've talked about, like, the sandwiches at Joe and Mary's, but, like, for free. When I was, when I was growing up on that oh. side of Jersey, I could look you in the face and tell you any place you went into had something on the bar. Food-wise? In the 70s, you always had something on the bar. I used to go to this one place in Union City. My friend's uncle worked there. And I never forget going down there, like, on a Tuesday night watching college basketball, six people at the bar. And he come over to you. You're hungry. I can eat something. Yeah. And he came back with mortadella and Adam cheese and Cuban crackers. What? With some cervezas? Are you fucking kidding me? Who shows up with mortadella, Adam cheese, and Cuban crackers? This guy was Irish. He was as Irish as they came. Fuck, yeah. You know, those type. There was places where... They always had some, yeah, like food thing in the back. That chance place I talk about Mm -hmm. is legendary because they were professionals. Yeah. If you went to the bar during the week and that bartender was there and he took a blast from you and he let you karate chop and all that (laughs) shit, well, that was the that was the Mike Cotton. That was the other place. The bartender, (laughs) you gave him ten dollars to let you karate chop him from time to time. Come on over here. And he go okay. He he didn't even give you his neck. (laughs) He even give you his neck, dog. This (laughs) is. My friend Roger used to karate chop. But back to Monday Night Football, I built a relationship with this restaurant. I would walk in there every Monday night with four, five, six deep, and we'd eat 200 wings, but leave a 20, we'd, we'd leave a 20 dollar tip. We never got into no fist fights or nothing. So for maybe a year and a half, I had a relationship up there. They trusted me. Go back to 1985. I would mug you for a dollar, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would walk in there, and they would still go, hey, hey, hey. I would eat wings, have a couple of margaritas, maybe a salad, maybe a Bloody Mary, and I'd take the check. I'd leave a 10 on the table, and I'd run out of there with the check. 
Really? I did that every fucking week. And I'll have my brother calling him, George. George goes, no, no, he was great. I would actually go up to the manager with the tab wrinkled up in my hand and talk to him. Like, no shit. Yeah, service was sensational. <laughs> I guess before computers you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. This is all before computers. This is way, and you know, I was so good at, at that that was my high point of disgusting thievery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, I was doing... Kids. High point or low point? High point. High point. That's when I was yeah. at the most disgusting of my uh, thievery career. Yeah. I couldn't rob big places. So I would walk into buildings with a suit on and rob like a bank box from a fucking under a desk, like an office building. The the secretary would get up to go pee. I'd go right in there, go into the drawer, and there would be the cash box. You never know. Sometimes it's $8. Sometimes it's 800 You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got to take a chance. Better than sitting on the couch looking for you quarters. You're coming down the elevator with a cash box. Bro, cash. You don't know how many jackpots I had. That I would walk off the elevator, walk out of the building, and the security guard would be right there. And I'd go, oh, Jesus Christ. But I'd have a suit on. Yeah, you look professional. Look I'd have a suit on. I'd have a fucking briefcase. I remember I used to have a briefcase. This like this leather <laughs> doctor's pouch. <laughs> and I used to go to Safeway in the mornings in Fort Lee. <laughs> and the overstock, <laughs> they would hide it under the shelves and on top of the product. So, so the big product in those days was yeast infection paste. <laughs> if you took it... <laughs> Based. You know the shit you put on your yeast infection. If you took it into Upper Manhattan, mm -hmm. the Harlem, the beginning, they give you a top dollar for those tubes. So every morning I would fucking go over there on the way over the city. This is this is my creepiness. This is this is even a, I was doing comedy and doing this. Who are you kidding? Nineteen ninety fucking three I was pulling this scam with a suit on every morning just to get into the city. I would leave my house with zero <laughs> would listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true businessman. You're going out. Listen, dog. You find this job on Craigslist. I, I was on. No? A, I was on a discipline. I would leave the house <laughs> with zero dollars and had to get into New York City to Midtown and have breakfast and get some way <laughs> score <laughs> and some way score joint something. Yep. You know what? And in my mind, I knew if I get into the city and get downtown, I could score breakfast, put it on the arm at Nikki the Greeks. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you knew people along the way. You had eaten there, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what, how are you gonna? Okay, how are you gonna get all those? I would put a suit. I get up in the morning, hop the my shirt, put the fucking thing in. No, 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 no. I'm a professional. I would walk <laughs> right to Safeway, look around the shelves. There'd be no security at yep. seven in the fucking morning. They don't come out until about yet. eight, nine o'clock. Nobody's, nobody's robbing them at seven no, in the no, morning. That, that, who do you think you're dealing with? You got to be first. Like I would start said in the book. I'm walking up and down. That's and why I, you take and the I, first flight? And I take two fucking yeast infection boxes, the whatever. And there was something else they wanted. Like, they didn't want Tylenol, they buy from you. All, any of those aspirins, they buy from you, but they wouldn't give you a top dollar. There was two things that were top dollar. <laughs> yeast infection juice. <laughs> yeah, so I would take whatever. I, and I always go for the yeast infection <laughs> juice. And in those days, in the suit, Lisa, I had 32, whatever I was, I would walk over the New, uh, George Washington Bridge. Walk over it? Walk over it. I did that 3,000 times. Walk <laughs> over it. That's a big, that's a long bridge. That's a long bridge. Not it's like really. a mile it's like and a half. Mile. Yeah. Really? I would take yeah. me fucking 20 fucking minutes. Well, your business suit? Business suit. suit walk down. Briefcase. I had the whole scam. I go to the bodega. Why not just take the bus? They give me. Because why waste You got to change a dollar fifty. I had zero dollars. <laughs> He's already. The only way I could get on that bus is if I got on, didn't pay. Those buses that you pay on the way out oh, and I run out the back door, what am I, three? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What am I, three? The man's I'm in a business suit. I'm in a business suit. I can act like one. You know what I'm saying? I walk oh, across. No one ever thought you were going to jump off the side? I always no, no. I don't like that shit. No, no. I'd, I did it all the time. And I'd walk under and I'd walk like two blocks into like 180th and there was a bodega there. You walked in, you put your product down. <laughs> The guy would say 35, 25. Nah, I got too much of this. Uh, give me $10. Okay. Okay. Boom, whatever, 60 bucks. That's all I needed to get the party started, 60 bucks. I'd walk two blocks south over to Broadway. There's a Cuban joint. Fuck it, it's 8 in the morning. Good enough for Cuban food. I'd bang out a Cuban sandwich, a potato, a mame, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then I'd take like a three-block walk past the Presbyterian, the upper Manhattan, one, yeah. whatever that is, and I'd hop on the fucking A train, the express downtown. Mm -hmm. Bang. Boom, there I am. Another fucking little hike. But before that hike, I take a little detour because there's a guy that sells nickel bags. 
We were like fifteen dollar bags. What the fuck? He's saving me a little joint all the way uptown. You know what I'm saying? My favorite is that he had two breakfasts before at eight a.m. He had his breakfast in the city. Got to get ready. No, no, I didn't then, have nothing. I left the house with hunger. With, oh, with hunger. I thought you had breakfast in the morning. At no, the city. no, there was no breakfast. No, I would have. Uh, he was saying I, he I could go to. Oh, could, I said you could go to downtown and do yeah, that there. I would, yeah, I would always stop and get Cuban food a little early. Oh, that's get, like, the a Cuban yeah. steak sandwich. You know, my favorite in those days was a cheese omelet with crinkle cut fries and, mm. and white toast with butter on that motherfucker <laughs> with a Coke with ice cubes in that motherfucker. Forget the water. I don't want no water. If I want water, I'll tell you. Get that fucking, <laughs> get that contamination away from me. I never drank water back then. Really? Fuck no. What was it? Was it like a thing where people were like, where they're afraid of the water? You were just like... No, nah, right I drink there. water. Like, I go, yeah. I'm surrounded by yeah. the best All this in the world. <laughs> in 1993, Schnapple used to make this drink. <laughs> Please tweet what was me it? if you remember. Schnapple had this drink. Snapple? Schnapple had this drink. If all the other drinks are 16 ounces. The big ones. No, Schnapple had an 8 ounce special vitamin clear drink that tasted really sweet and delicious. Special vitamin? Not a lot of them have. You see what I'm saying? Who do you think you're dealing with? Joey Bananas? <laughs> This is 1993, and they discontinued them. But you wake up all coked up, and that's what you went for. I get one of those, and I'd be ready to go. I'm in Schnapple. You know what I'm saying? That's amazing. I've never heard him make this thing smaller. I had the smaller ones in those. This is when the fat lady first hit. Oh yeah, she, she called her the, up the on thing the had the little fact at the top. Still thing, a little bottle, all fruit, natural <laughs> drink, <laughs> yep. energizer. This was way before they had ginseng in it or something. People lost <laughs> their mind. <laughs> In those days, people were still on Gingsing. Nobody was there. <laughs> I'm with the Chinese, you fuck. <coughs> Gingsing. Schnapple. Uh, Is that because you were, were hanging out at, like, uh, Hashways and you just, like, saw the deliveries? Like, how do you know all these weird drinks? And there was only two places that had that Schnapple. One of them was Hashways, <laughs> and the other one was Little Fucking Lottery Place oh. in Cliffside Park, maybe f- <laughs> Fairview on that fucking street there. Oh my god. And you would go in there and get like a lottery ticket and they had them. There were those little eight ounce ones. And how I knew was because when I used to hook up with my boy, we'd go into the city to connect. I'd always go, let's go over there and pick up two snapples to get the night started on the right <laughs> foot. You know what I'm saying? You get that little juice inside of you and nothing could really harm you. Those Where'd you grow up, brother? Who's that, me? I'm gonna uh, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Look, look, me. producer extraordinaire. <laughs> And it's Con- a, fucking it's consultant too. to the stars. Simone. Look at them and shit. I grew up on Long Island. Did you really? Yeah. Where? Close to those clubs? S- Smithtown. Smithtown. Now, where so is that? Suffolk County. We're about a, like 20 minutes into is Suffolk County. Is that where County. you were born? That's where I was born, yeah. So it was, you know, it was very it was suburban, but we, you know. You know, when I was a kid, my mom. We did K- Special K. Did you? Did you ever hear that stuff? Special? It was a carrot. What whatever year that, was this? This is I, high school, 90 to 95. Special K. Then 95 to 99 was high school. It was college for me. So like the 90s were the drugs that we did. Special K. I didn't really f- fuck with that stuff, but it was because I heard it was horse tranquilizer. But our weed was decent. And no one good. really did coke, but now when you go back, they called Sniff Town. Coke, heroin. All day long. Because pills took over. Hey, did anybody watch that fucking ESPN about what? the kid from Boston? One no. Eyes. No. What's his name? Oh, no, no, the white kid. Oh, the, the white kid? Oh, shit. Yeah, did you see that one? I watched it, man. Me and my, that boy could fucking hoop. Shoot. Yeah. And, and school. Get Bro, the that boy. What was his name? Chris Heather? Something like that. He uh, comes around to schools. He talks about heroin and all that stuff now. When he got to the Celtics and he would go to his That's- boys outside. And get fucking heroin or pills. Me. That's who I want on the podcast, Lisa. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Because that guy tells the truth. He told the story about doing meth for five days. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the cops were behind him. And he goes, oh, my God, thank God, because he thought people were chasing him. <laughs> he goes, I went to the cops like fucking, oh, thank God you're here. <laughs> These five guys are chasing me. Yeah. It was the most, like, I felt it. Like I couldn't take my eyes off, and no. I was supposed to be watching something else, and I was like, "Cancel that! This is what I'm watching." Remember, he was talking about going outside during like halftime of that Celtics game. The fucking Celtics in his game uniform, way. like having is that true? Thing. You heard? You were growing up when all this was going on. I, I I don't remember from then. I saw this. This is an older thirty for thirty. I've seen this a year or two ago. It was really good. It's uh, it's crazy. Well, like especially, I don't know. I it, it just you don't think it's gonna be. 
a nice looking white guy you just don't some most of the time when you think about that like that affecting someone and it just destroyed his life getting clean and going back home and like losing it again like listen I, as soon as i saw it and he had it under control mm -hmm. i knew this mm -hmm. didn't end like this mm -hmm. I, I was a i was there i was there i went to prison you understand me? I had it under control too. Yep. Till three days. Who was I kidding? <laughs> it took like a day and a half <laughs> to get un like, under control. Like seriously, you know how ashamed I am of that? Like I just came out of the penal fucking code. I learned my lesson, but you know what? I'm going for a fucking taste. You think about that? That's fucking creep. But I, you know it. It's it's your pattern, bro. Mm -hmm. And when they sent him home, it was he was done. Done. <clears throat> done. Once you go home. You're done. You're back to those fucking hills. I mean, he was in, like, M Fresno. Yeah, and upstate losing California. losing his mind in Fresno. You know, going fucking deep. He, 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 he was homeless. I mean, yeah, it went, it went for real. No, that shit's real, man. Kids at home, he was going to call them and finally said no, and he went, and he went to a rehab. Yeah. Pills and heroin were tough in the 90s, man. Bro, heroin's been tough for the last fucking 80 years, man. It's destroyed lives, man. Yeah. It really has. And, you know, it's nice to watch Bumpy Johnson on there. I, I loved American <laughs> Gangster, and I loved yeah. all that shit, but I remember New York City in the late 60s and 70s. I remember going to my mom's dry cleaners and... Those were the bad people in those days. Those were the people that were going into your business in those days with a gun and going, give me your money with those people that you'd see nodding on the corner, waiting for the light to change. And all of a sudden, they'd wake up, oh. and they'd look around, and they'd straighten their faces. Like zombies. And they'd walk across the street, and then they'd stop again somewhere to smoke <sighs> a cigarette, and they'd fall half asleep. And you would see this as a child. I saw this shit, and I'm like, wow. And my mom would call them tecatos. That's what you called heroin people in those days. Really? They got those. <clears throat> That's, I mean, it was so uh, cheap. Three dollars, five dollars. Done. Done. Two, three times. You go downtown in those days to Chinatown. When I was a kid, I knew, I had a friend that mingled in heroin. He mm -hmm. wasn't, like, I didn't hang out with him. He was much older than me. You know what I'm saying? But I would go down there with him. And it was tremendous. It was tremendous because I was a kid and I had a partner and he would walk us into a bar and buy his beers and a bowl of chili and go, I'll be back. Order me something. And really? he'd fucking leave. He'd go cop and he'd come back and then he'd give us money and go go across the street to Washington Square Park. And we'd walk across the street and we'd get up to eight values of $10 and come back. And then we'd eat the chili, drink the beer and he'd drop us back to Jersey. We were like his decoy. We worked with him. He was a plumber. <laughs> God rest his soul. He was my goom. I loved him. Quaaludes is the one I wish I... I never did a Quaalude, but I wish I could Tremendous. fucking do... Oh, I heard... Tremendous. You just, like, one or two, and you just were fucking set. What happened was, again, like everything... See, the Quaalude, the fucking MDMA, <laughs> the fucking uh, Jerry's kid. What was it? What, was the, what were you doing in college? The Special K. Special K. All that shit is just a... Uh, it's a different name for the Jerry's same. Kids. Yeah. yeah, that's a good name. It's, <laughs> it's a different name for the same similar product. Yeah, that they just mixed and added. You know, there was what a about time. ecstasy? Is that the ecstasy, same? Ecstasy. They added heroin to mm -hmm. it, and it gives you this weird thing, and people were dying, people sweating to death. Who the fuck knows? You know, it's all. It always started with the same thing. The quaalude was like a, a pharmaceutical thing. Yeah. <clears throat> what what happened was, this is interesting that you brought this up. Mm-hmm. What happened was, people started pirating them. You know, Lee's a genius. Lee went, they bought four, four two, two quaaludes, took them, got so fucking high, he goes, I want to know, I want in on this. He's a chemistry student. He goes, I'm wasting my time playing with fucking monkeys and fucking, <laughs> you know, playing with mice. What do I give a fuck if a mice gets cancer? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, what's I got delicious. to do with Uncle Joey? I'm doing this to make a living. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he takes that, fuck, they would take those quaaludes, Break them down, however they do it chemically. I'm no fucking, I don't know nothing about this shit. And they would poke them. I mean, they were pirates. But what these motherfuckers didn't tell you what, these things were just a tad stronger than what you usually got. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so here you are popping this pharmacy ones, 
and you're having a cocktail because they already told you. But when you got the fucking thing, they I look you in the eye and I go, Lily, where are you going tonight? Me and Paula, we're gonna go to a bar. We're gonna pop a quail. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this one fucking time. I have one cocktail and a glass of water and call a fucking Uber. I'm not. Please do me the favor. <laughs> promise me, I'm not gonna fucking give you this this loot. I but, promise, Joey. But these college kids said, "Fuck it, we can make the loot, and make them for a dollar, sell them for two. They don't give a fuck. We can make them for a, we make them for eighty cents and sell them for <laughs> two? two. What are you nuts? You buy them for two, sell them for four? What? Hello, hello. You walk into a bar in those days and go, "What do you, you got?" You come up to a guy like me and go, "Joey, tell me what you think. Pop it." And four minutes later, I got a cocktail. Because right away, you drink. Nobody ever did a quail and drank <laughs> water, water with yeah. it. Anybody who did a quail, even at four, had, really, had even, a cocktail. Even at four in the afternoon, <laughs> we'll go. Hold on one second. Let me get the strongest, whatever you got. The bucket, the garage, <laughs> terminal juice oil, whatever you got. They pop a quail, <laughs> and they get fucking lit. Like you just get lit, but you got soft, loose. <sighs> Everything got really soft, and all of a sudden, you, you started going in and out. <laughs> like, you'd be there, and you'd be giggling and listening to the music, but you'd be going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, until finally, you just short circuit And then the next morning, you just wake up, thirsty, a chick next to you, <laughs> some guy naked in front of you. Like, it was that. Oh. It wasn't like that for me. Yeah. Like, it happened a few times with those biscuits. I... I started eating my first. When did I get my first quail? Because they stopped making them then, right? They, they just stopped, stopped making they like them, outlawed them. But now these genius kids like they Lee, only had the the, the they got the juice. <laughs> Fuck you, bitches! They got the blueprint. <laughs> but here's the problem: like I told on the Joe Rogan podcast, from time to time, when these guys before they became fucking pill manufacturers, they didn't get the right table, or they didn't look at the flooring, because now all the tables. Because the f the flooring was off, the tables are like this. So let me tell you what happens when your table is crooked. That means when they place the pills on that are dry, right, or whatever the fuck they're making, the pills, the juice drips down to the bottom, right? The quaalude juice drips down to the bottom. So these pills are fucking... So those pills are fucking Gorilla Biscuits to the max. And these other ones are kind of dud. They'll get like a like a yeah. sixteen year old high for an hour or two. And, oh my god, I did this quailer. <laughs> Meanwhile, some guy like me is like, it didn't do nothing to me. Yeah. Right. So now, let me tell you what happens. You're they taking both, two of those ones down there. Hold on. They both go into the same gorilla mix, and you sell them in the street. So fifty a gorilla mix, and fifty are just uh uh uh. Right. Okay. So me and you were like, what the how dog? do you know which one's gorilla mix? You never one? know. You, this <laughs> you don't is know what, till you this know. This is the beauty of this. Me and you go out on a Friday night. We're like, listen, what are we doing today? We're going to Joe and Mary's. How much you got? I got 80. I got 75. What do you want to do? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ominous. What do you want to do with 155? And, and this guy's a nice guy. He would actually look me in the face and believe. He'd go, man, listen, I don't want to get too fucked up. <laughs> Let's just do a half grab. I knew I had him. Yeah. I knew I had him <laughs> yeah, right there. Right away. Just get what, what, sure. how, much, how much a half gram costs? 45. Just give me 20. Okay. I'll even pay for the first five because I got a fucking goldfish. Put your money away. <laughs> That's mine later. Don't worry about nothing. I hope you got a pencil and a paper for IOU money. All right. And we take like a fucking, we take like a $4 Quaalude, but it's a dud. Oh. It's one of the duds, right? So guys like you and me are professional. We're kind of high, but not really. Now we're kind of disappointed. You know what I'm saying? So we sit there. We drink a couple more fucking Lila, the bartender there, the one who had a wig and she had a dog that was like epileptic. We used to piss on him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up, right? She'd make you these vodka orange juices that were white. We were fucking 17, guys. We were 17. These vodka orange juices just had a touch of orange juice on the top. <laughs> the rest was just fucking vodka. Oh. And we'd be blasting those things, and that quaalude wouldn't hit us. It would hit us, but mildly. Mm -hmm. Now we got to look at them. we got to go into emergency <laughs> measures. <laughs> we we got to pop the second one. Yeah. So we take that second one, which is the Gorilla Biscuit of Debt, and we pop that motherfucker. Oh. But that and one takes a little while oh, to hit yeah. us. And that time, Flacco shows up. <laughs> what do you got? What are you holding? 
Give me another one. <laughs> Give me the money. Don't worry about nothing. I'll catch you Tuesday. <laughs> now we're in the bathroom in the middle of all this. Ba boom. Oh, we get hit with the quail of the death. <laughs> now you're at the bar that vodka's burping in your fucking thing. <laughs> the room is just moving. Oh. If there's music, your ears are sensitive as shit, which is really <laughs> weird to describe. You oh. can't cover them because everybody think you're fucking you're <laughs> fag. Like, they want an ambulance goes by. Those people that cover their ears shoot them. All those people are just weak fuck. You never cover your ears. You stand there like a soldier. <laughs> cover your ears like a fucking half a fruitcake. That's how I know what side of the fucking fence you're hanging on. You know oh what I'm saying? God. Covering your ears. Oh. <laughs> you don't know how many times. I, I remember my friend's uncle died or something. No. <laughs> Where I was living, his mom died, and he had his <laughs> the black suit that he was going to wear to the wake the next day. I had moved in with the runnies mm -hmm. in uh, maybe uh, April of 81. This is June of 82, <laughs> July of 82, maybe something like that, May of 82. <laughs> I met Joe and Mary's throwing down those fucking white vodka orange juices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing bumps and a little spoon with a little bottle and shit. I had the whole kit. And I'm eating those Gorilla Biscuits. I go home, I eat a piece of chicken to stop the spins. And I sit in his favorite chair. His suit's right here. And as I'm sleeping, all of a sudden I wake up in the middle of the night and I start puking on his suit. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got thrown out for that one. But that was... <laughs> Gorilla Biscuits. God. But then I learned you, the secret to Gorilla Biscuits was like any other pill. You can't drink with it. Yeah. Enjoy the pill. That's where it gets bad. Yeah, when you start to mix. That's well, but you were already bad. drunk, though. Was that bad then? That's horrible. Horrible. What it would do, I would see fucking four of you right now. Like, yeah. I swear to God, I would get to. My friend's mother was dying. Listen, again, he wasn't my friend. He was an associate. His mother was dying of cancer. In ninth, his mother was dying of cancer since like 78. Jeez, let him be your friend. And in those days, they used to send her these things called tuminoles, F-66s. This is all is that, you Was made. that the number that was on the side of them? On the side F -66. of them. F-66. <laughs> like you know the planes. What? It was the devil, but not really. You know what I'm saying? It was missing the six. <laughs> she would fucking take those pills and sell them for 20 a piece. Oh, my God. And I remember splitting one one night. Oh, my God. That's what the what you the know, government kept for the for the real sick people. But in those days, yeah. But in those days, man, my mom had just died. That's the only thing that would kill the pain. Me going out and, and experimenting with those fucking uh, yeah zombo pills and shit. Oh, no I Valium I... in those. Yeah, I would eat them. There was a. That's right. We had the janitor. What's that? We had a janitor that used to come in from the high school. He was at <laughs> our janitor. Our high school had a very unique janitorial system. We had Benny and the Jet. Benny and the Jet was a janitor that was like 60. He was like Grandpa from the Munsters, but real tall and skinny. And I knew what his soft spot was. <laughs> he loved blackberry brandy, so I would go up to him <laughs> at 7.30. How'd you figure that out? <laughs> you because he would it? buy blackberry brandy every day for the liquor store. And the guy told me one day, and I figured him out. <laughs> That's like Joey's inside stock. He's like a stockbroker who got inside information. Oh He's God. like... This uh, is what your problem is. You don't always, go to the talk to the liquor you store know, I guy. I was half homeless. I had a yeah. house to stay. And in those days, and I inquisitive. Was kind of, I was kind of embarrassed. <laughs> I was kind of embarrassed to be living on your couch. So the least I could do run as easy in those days is get up and get out, fold my fucking. Yeah. You know, you ever, you ever let somebody stay it. in your house and you wake up? Yeah. And they're, they're watching still game out. shows. Yeah. Breakfast is on the table. <laughs> fucking sheets are still yeah, on the couch. Yeah, sheets are still on the couch. <laughs> I didn't want to. I wanted you to yeah. always let me stay in your house. Thank you. So I would get up, and you wake up and go, where did this kid go? Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted you to go. Yeah. Don't worry about where I went. I got 10 bucks. Let me go hustle. I go to the diner, eat eggs like a doctor, right? <laughs> now I got four bucks, but I need six to get into the city and get a nickel back. And you just hustle. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's just a... Uh, Fuck I don't yeah. even know what I was talking about. I'm so fucking... No, hungry. the janitor you were saying. Oh, all right. So this janitor. So it was Benny and the Jet. So once I figured out that... Benny was hooked on blackberry brandy. <laughs> brandy. I would see him in the morning and go, Benny, I got a bottle of blackberry brandy. I'm holding for you till later. When? When <laughs> later? Listen to me. One day. His ears <laughs> perk up. One day. And I'm so crazy. I'm in a class. He actually knocked on the fucking door. And he asked the teacher if he could talk to me. <laughs> 
and then, then ta- you then, then, Benny, we can't be doing this outside. And then, Benny, I'm in ninth uh, grade. Benny didn't have much. What are you doing? <laughs> Benny, this is social studies. Leave me alone, all right? Miss <laughs> Gibson's doing her best uh, in there to try uh, to get uh, attention. Oh, my God. So, Benny, <laughs> Benny went off the deep end. One day, I did give him a bottle of Blackberry. After I put him through a month of torture. Every day, he's like, where's the Blackberry? But did you, like, half empty it out and put, like, water in no, it or something? No, no, no. I gave him, like, a big bottle, like, the whole pocket. <laughs> when the long con's that so long. Listen to this. Listen to this. I give him the bottle. <laughs> I give him the, I treat him good for, like, three days. You know what I'm saying? First day, I give him, like, the... Not the half, but the full. Okay, yeah. And he looks at me, hugs me. Thank you. Where was it? Because I kept telling him somebody kept hiding it from me. <laughs> I went to a man for Benny. <laughs> Every day he's mopping up, thinking oh, this is going to be five day. days a week. I had Benny on the fucking on the slide. No, okay. right? <laughs> Benny's doing all your dirty work. Benny was my dog. <laughs> Benny's hooking to the school was his wife was a big shot in the office. So if you were cool with her, you were cool with Benny. How big? How, how much of a big shot could you be? <laughs> Benny was in charge of the janitors, right? <laughs> okay. So Monday, I give Benny a little bottle. Tuesday, I give Benny a big bottle. Wednesday, I hold him out. You know, <laughs> yeah, he got to hold you back. Got, yeah, you, you know me. I work him like a Jew. Yeah. <laughs> you got to let him go. And for Thursday, I give a little bottle little. of like the best Blackberry <laughs> brandy known to mankind. I give it to bottle. Okay, I give him the bottle like at 8 in the morning. He goes bananas. He, he makes like woo, like he makes like a noise and everything. Take <laughs> all day on the speaker, Betty. Please come to the <laughs> how, <laughs> Betty. Please come to the office. When I'm mad, like, just coming. Now there's like worried. now there's like six janitors in those days that work like from eight to four, and then at four thirty, <laughs> another crew of janitors came in. Now they were the fuck. Well, they were the fucked up ones. They were the ones that had, like, uh, fucked up disabilities. They, they heard voices, <laughs> shit like that. Those are the ones we yeah. tortured, you know. So let, let me finish on Benny. Hold on. Let me take a sip of water here. We got Benny. I got. I forget all about Benny. <laughs> I give Benny the fucking bottle. I move on with my life. Ha, ha, ha. You know, I had him on the hook. Now I owe Benny because I, I had robbed the school. And I had to give back the stuff. And I didn't, you know, I wanted to cut a deal with Benny. Like, <laughs> me, I blow towards the windows <laughs> and got into the thing with a flare. You know me, dog. I could always <laughs> figure it out in those days. All for some blackberry yeah. brandy? You wanted him to let, like, let you bring like him to something school? happened that I was trying to get tight with Benny. I wanted something from, oh, the scales. There were the scales oh, in those in days. Ro- in the science room. So we would steal this triple beams. They were 35 <laughs> apiece, hot in the street, anywhere. Ten minutes. They went like fucking hot <laughs> cakes. I ended up robbing all the scales. Me and this dude, and we remained them nameless. No <laughs> no names. No names, Joey. So so that Benny one night, they're in a fucking basketball game. Third quarter of the basketball game. I gave him the bottle <laughs> at fucking... Eight in the morning, this thing, there's no way you could have drank it. Guess what? He drank it. <laughs> Lee, you ready for this? Let me tell you what Benny does, Lee. I'm not ready for it. What are we- During the basketball game, Benny has the chains to lock up the doors. And what do you think he does? He, he passes put, out? He puts chains on his hands, and he walks down the fucking aisle like he's fucking <laughs> Louis Lamar walking on a tightrope, and people are clapping. <laughs> And people are calling him Benny in the jet. His eyeballs are red. He's reeking of blackberry brandy. <laughs> I fucked up Benny in the jet, dog. Where's Tony Bennett? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Did he lose his job or something? <laughs> no, Benny retired. Benny was a good man. I want to be around. I, I had Benny, dog, in those days, of brandy. I, I can't believe it. I love how <laughs> No, no, he didn't. Brandy. Listen, I had Benny, I had Nick the Greek. <laughs> I was tormenting Nick the Greek. I hit him with fake snowballs and told him I was going to protect him. <laughs> what are fake snowballs? <laughs> uh, somebody who will swear oh to be God. true oh. as you used to do with me 
Or fake snowballs. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yes, right? it does. <laughs> so, all right. So we had we had Nick the Greek, but we had the nighttime janitor. Now in McKinley School, we had Eagle Eye. We had a guy. <laughs> what was this thing? <laughs> he would walk into the gym and go, "All right, you guys got to get out of here." <laughs> Go, go fuck yourself, Eagle Eye. <laughs> he had one of those eyes that went up, and he went clap. <laughs> oh, McKinley was rough, though. We were oh, rough no. on those janitors. There was like three janitors there that were kind of mental, that had problems. All of them got tortured. <laughs> All three of them. Different but ways. I still remember fucking that guy. But now, Eagle I get to the high fuck school. You, Eagle Eye. I get to the high school, and there's this guy that never bothered nobody. You could tell somewhere along the line he was traumatized at a young age or something. And he was okay. He said hi to you or something like that. I don't know what happened. One night I got caught drinking or something like that with another buddy of mine. And for some reason in my fucking head, I'm like, this motherfucker rather this out because he saw us going into the bathroom. And in those days, I wanted to kill my stepdad. I was pissed. I was real revengeful. I didn't know how to fuck this dude up. I just, you know what I'm saying? If it was anybody else, but this dude just fucking bothered me. Yeah. And he was a big dude, and he could fuck me up. You uh -huh. know? I'm a Joan Marius. I'm 17, 18. I'm a fucking adult. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. robbing. I'm out there borrowing from loan sharks, awesome. not paying them back. You know? Now, let me get the, the year correct so I don't fuck nobody over here. So it's 83. I'm living with Fernie in the basement. I'm making a little bit of money. I'm doing all right. I'm on the straight and narrow kind of, except for Friday and Saturday. You know, you, you do your usual eight ball, end up in the city. Some nights are good, some nights are bad. Whatever. No relationships. Me and a guy shared a room, you know? That's it. That's it. He was as crazy as I was. Some nights we went out together. We loved each other. He was my brother. Today he's got the HIV. It's a fucking nightmare. But not from hanging out with me. He got that afterward banging. One Friday night, I'm at the fucking bar. And I'm with like three or four people. And we're doing a couple bumps. Who the fuck knows what's on the jukebox? And then comes the janitor. And I go, look what we got here. So I put a beer next to him. There was like a little sandwich crate that you could go and eat sandwich. Or the kid, John Cowan, worked next door at Chickadee. We had Chicken Delight down the corner. Oh, really? But then we had Chicken D right next door. And John would always, when the Chicken D would close, he would always bring the last pieces of chicken into the bar. So they sat there all night. At night, they were no good. You were coked up. Nobody would touch the chicken. One time they had a birthday party. They bought an ice cream cake. The cake melted. Nobody touched it. Everybody in there was snorting coke, yeah. bro. It was just a coke bar when we were kids. Lila gave you fucking thick drinks. And in comes this janitor, and he's rocking and rolling. And I'm a fucking klep, klep, klepto fucking thief. And I walk over and I see his jacket. And I stick my hand in the keys. And there's keys in one pocket. And I go around him. And what do you think we got there? A fucking pill case. Take the pill case out. I go in the bathroom. Holy shit. He's got like fucking 15 volumes in here. I take all the volumes out. Close it up. Put the pill case back in his pocket. You know me. He's got like three or four different kind of pills in there. But... I got the V's. I'm yeah. good. I'm like, me popping with these V's right now at this bar at this time? You know who I am? I'm like St. fucking Jude <laughs> right now. People suck my dick for two tens right now. He had the tens with the V's in them. <sighs> Old school. You look at those and drool if you're a professional. You want to go home and give mama a stab and that fucking horn ain't going to work tonight. So I kept doing this. Every Friday, I built like a little network of guys. Like him. And I just go up to him, pickpocket him, take his volumes, put him back. <laughs> After about six or seven weeks, fucko finally figured out that I was robbing his value. <laughs> so one Friday night, I go in there, take his pills, open them up. He's got a bunch of these white pills. They look like quaaludes, just smaller. I took all of them, put them in my pocket. I walk out there like, where's the V's? I go, no, 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 he's all out of V's, but he's got these. He's got baby quaaludes. It's winter of 83. <laughs> We're at a bar. I'm not on the best of terms in the town right now. <laughs> They're all waiting for one more slip-up before I get thrown in the river. 
<laughs> we're at a bar, me and my buddies. What up? What'd you get? We're all coked up. We're dependent on these things. It's one thirty in the morning. This is what's going to bring us down with this booze. Now we could all go home, finish our bag. In those days, we still weren't going nuts. We were just going out for a little while. And fucking, uh, I had these white pills. And I pop one. You know me, dog. I got balls of steel. I pop one. And my friend's like, fuck it, let's take them. So I give them to like six of my buddies. And I put the rest in my pocket. I fucking go home, Steve Run is easy. Go home around three, coked up to the gills oh, with this no. pill in me. I wake up the next day, like at six o'clock at night, and all I do is shit for 15 <laughs> minutes. Bah, bah. And while I'm shitting Run is easy, I'm falling asleep. <laughs> I'm starting to puke. I'm thirsty. I'm dehydrating. I mean, I'm drinking water from the faucet. I shit, I wipe my butt, I drink enough water to get me back to the bed, and I go right back to bed. The next thing I know, there's this light. It's Monday, same thing. I go to the bathroom, oh. I pee for five minutes, and everything comes out of my butt, and I just drink water, wash my hands, and go right back to bed. Finally, Tuesday. Now, you know me, dog. I can't sleep like that. Tuesday, I finally get up, and I get out of bed. And I walk, I get breakfast, I got an extra breakfast. I mean, I haven't eaten in two fucking days. I drink a gallon or two of water. I walk a little bit, I get some sun. I get back and I see the the lights blinking on the answering machine. And I hit the fucking thing. And they say, Coco, where the fuck are you? I've been sleeping for three days, shit and blood. What the fuck's the matter with you? What were those things? Call me back. Beep. Coco, what the oh. fuck? I've been shitting and fucking passing out. Unbelievable. What are you thinking? <sighs> Beep. Coco, call me back. I'm on my way to the hospital. I don't know what the fuck you gave me, but you better have a good explanation. Beep. Coco, you got any more of those pills? They were tremendous, right? I'm hearing all this <laughs> shit. Finally, bro, one, I call one of the guys back, and he goes, bro, what the fuck did you give me? He goes, I went and looked them up. There was no internet in those days. I had to go to the library, <laughs> and it was what you give people when they got an epileptic fit. Oh, my God. And, dog, I'm lucky those guys didn't die because that's the first warning. Do not, like in big letters, like those pills will fucking kill you. We all lived. Holy Some shit. Some people still hold a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? That's what happened to those people. Did you ever see people. him at the bar ever again after that? Yeah, a couple people. Nobody fucked with I still talk to two of the guys that I gave the pills to. They live in San Diego and Vegas and... When I go to those towns, they come to the shows and whatnot. So it was, it was just I ate them too, but I gave the rest of them to the dude who kept asking me for. Them. Oh, <coughs> fuck! I must have had six left. I gave them to those kids, to that kid, and he was popping like one, one. Oh, then he started popping twos, and here I was dead. He was eating two of them, like chewing oh. them, like fucking. Those pills are tremendous. I wish you'd get more of them. And then one night. Like, maybe a month later, dog, we went out. There was no blow. We got pretty fucked up at the bar. Another one I'm not very proud of. It was one of those crazy nights, bro. The cop showed up at Joe and Mary's. The owner told him, spitting is bad. They told him to get the fuck out of the joint. Somebody went to buy cigarettes, and the thing got stuck, and he put his hand through the glass. You remember the old cigarette machines? Yeah. Like you had to pull the thing. <laughs> He put his hand through the glass. <laughs> the fucking marbles. I mean, for for a while there, we were having a, a kind of a weird... One night it snowed. It's, it was one of those New York snows. Like a foot and a half, two feet of snow. No newspaper delivery. This is before the internet, Lee. This is when every morning you depended on those two newspapers. The local and the daily news. Mm -hmm. You were either a post or a daily <clears> news, <throat> but the post made up their own sport lines. So we don't deal with those fucking <laughs> thieves. We go with the daily news. Dog, there were days, two of those, two days, they didn't come. Milk used to get delivered in those days. You know, milk, you, you, you tried to drive. Everything was shut down, so we couldn't even get the lines on games. And I'll never forget one night, we had just gotten Coke. Like, even Coke, Coke dealers were like, bro, I can't get the co car out. I'll never forget me and this kid, Darren Rago, God rest his soul, was sitting by the window like lookouts we weren't looking out we were just looking at the snow how beautiful mm -hmm. it was got a couple of drinks on this and what the fuck did we see right as easy a dude this is northern new jersey 1983 the fuck is wrong with you 
we see a dude cross country skiing, like just perfect <laughs> form, like just cross country skiing. The guy next to me is a future murderer. <laughs> He don't know it yet, but I do. That's a murder in this guy. All I did was look at him, and he goes, what the fuck is he thinking? Let's get out there. Bro, we went out there. <laughs> you know, us two went out there first. I thought we were just going out there to run and just go, go get the fuck out of our neighborhood and shit, right? Why? No. You're just skiing. <laughs> no, 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 listen. Cross country You're not supposed arrogant. to ski on Burger Line <laughs> Avenue, all right? You want to ski, go to the mountains. Very arrogant. This is our neighborhood. You know, cross country ski <laughs> with, perfect, with perfect form. <laughs> like this is Switzerland or the Olympics, you fucking momo. <laughs> listen, not only did I run out, when people saw me run out, <laughs> did like they eight of them <laughs> ran out. And they're like, what the fuck? You chased them out of town? All, no, 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 no. Darren. Now there's two feet of snow on the sides and shit. He no, everyone. <laughs> tackled him. There's no everyone. I only Darren was crazy. I didn't think. I thought Darren was just gonna chase him like fifty yards. We get the fuck out of our neighborhood <laughs> and throw a snowball at him. Fuck no, Darren. When I by the time I look at these guys and look back, Darren's thirty yards from the guy, and he's like, "Hey, you fucking cocksucker!" And he's yelling. So now we're like, "Oh no!" We take off. People are falling down. By the time we get over that. Darren's punching the fuck out of this guy. I mean, UFC type shots to the head. Fuck those concussions and this shit. This guy was down. Darren's hitting him with fucking elbows and a pop, pop. The guy's his head's going. I mean, this is fucked up. This is when I knew he was a murderer. So this is when I knew, you know, what I'd known for years. His mom was dying of cancer. They got Jesus divorced. Christ. You know what I'm saying? He had this thing. He's, yeah. He was juicing. It was the beginning of his juicing. <laughs> yeah. we, were, we, were, we had him doing push-ups at bars. We would take him to bars and go, Darren, do a bump. Listen, come here. Do, do 10 push-ups and show, pose for these people. Show who the fuck they're dealing with. North Bergen, represent. Go ahead. And he'd go, really? What do you think? Yeah, go ahead. All of us would talk him into it. What, are you crazy? Do a bump, do some push-ups, warm up, and do poses. <laughs> and we'd make them do crabs and shit. <laughs> I, 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 to this day, I miss that craziness of the East Coast, like you do that yeah. little, that yeah. little neighborhood you grew up in. It was a safety because you were like with your friends that you grew up with, but the sh you know some of the sh none of the shit was safe. You know, no. but it's fun. It was. It's never seen. <laughs> dangerous in the moment <laughs> mm. I'm so sorry so Darren beats the fuck out of this guy <laughs> yeah, this, 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 seems, this, seems, this, seems, this seems dangerous in the hold moment. on we drag him oh, like good. 30 feet to a VFW <laughs> and we throw him over the fence Darren throws him <laughs> wait, wait I have one question this I have one question are his skis yeah. still on his feet oh no oh, but they, they can't skis. be with the ski Darren hit him with the ski it was classic shit Classic. Oh. They, then they sold the skis. <laughs> no, no, we don't know. No, no, no. This is how beautiful this was. So uh, beautiful. He throws him over. Darren jumps over and starts fucking taking the flag from the VFW and tie around his ankle. Darren's like, fuck it. This guy's going to be missing an act or whatever. He piles more snow on top of him. We go back <laughs> in the bar. By that time the coke shows up, we do bumps, we celebrate. We forget all about the whole fucking situation. But an hour later, we see fucking red lights everywhere, right? Like, and then we got the bar surrounded. <laughs> Come out right now. We know who you are. So I look around the bar. I got like fucking two eight balls in my pocket. I'm going down. But I look around and I see I know one of the cops. My job is to get out there and get to him. If I can get to him, I'll put this eight ball in my hand and shake his hand and tell him we're good. I don't know what happened here. And he'll say, get the fuck out of here. Master plan. I'm sitting there. Cops are getting out of their car. But they're not running in like SWAT. Yeah. They're like, what is this, a fucking joke? You know, they're all in the middle of the street. The door opens up. My idiot friends walk out. I see the cops rushing them. I get out the right time. I see my buddy. Hey, what's going on? I put the eight ball in his hand. I go, no, we were here hanging out. He goes, all right, get the fuck out of here. Walk this way. As we're walking this way, I, I don't know what the cops are in there for. Like, I had forgotten. I'm so fucked up. And I look at the police car, and the dude is in the back with blankets <laughs> on, <laughs> just fucking shaking. <laughs> and we just walk right past him. The, it's a, the fact that... You, I love how you were like, what, why? Just he was just skiing. 
<laughs> what was what's wrong with you? No, done. It was 1983. You, you skiing in the neighborhood, especially cross country. I didn't even know what that was. If you're gonna ski, I wanted you to ski like James Bond Holes and, and shit and Her Majesty's yeah. Secret Service. I don't want you to fucking. I imagine like you chased him out of town, threw snowballs at him. Jesus Christ! No, dog. This is you want another Starly? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> But it's easy. Talk to me, brother. You got me good. This, this star of death got me fucked up. No, man. I love it. I could tell it hit you a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this thing it's, you were looking at me be, like. Oh, my God. I haven't done one of those in a, a very long time. You want another one? I'll take one for the road. I won't you do one You can take two for the road. Oh, That's thank not, you so much. You never know what happens on Friday night when cars are running easy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not this weekend. I'm on the road. Where are you this week? Oh, uh, Phoenix. Stand up live. I love that club. That's so weird. You like it. I think it's too big for me. Yeah, and it, well, and it bothers me. It's it does. It is big. It bothers me. That's what bothers me. That's number one. Number two. Jesus Christ! You want your comedy to be pure? Really? I gotta hear music. That's my only beef. Yeah, I know. Give me the respect I deserve. I've been fighting in the mud all my fucking life. I've been on the set for six years, taking orders from kids I could chop up in half. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They have. They don't even have the wit of me now. You want me to? come down here and while I'm on stage I gotta hear music you know it's uh but it's a great venue it, it's yeah it's, it's nice big. it's big big hotel's nice but yeah the music next door a lot of these places though are like have those music I don't bars think the piano audience, bars I don't think the audience can hear it though <laughs> yeah but we hear it but what? it doesn't you know it well, is what no, it they is. Gotta, let me tell you some one thing about the improvs they invest in their sound systems I gotta right, give them that. Yeah. they yeah. really work hard and if there's a flaw and you tell them they fix it. it, yeah. And then they call you the next day, and they're like, hey, we fixed that thing. You're like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> that was last night. I'm good. Yeah. I'm in Phoenix. You know, I'm in fucking Altadena. Yeah. They, um, they, they, you know, they curtain off that little back part if it's not, if there's no one back there. But I like that room. I just like, I've always had fun there. I like Tempe, too. I, I just, came up in Tempe. Yeah. It's sentimental. I remember, I did it a couple of times, the old, before they reconstructed it. I like that. That was always a fun... Like a a pride destination. What yeah. were your pride destinations in comedy? Like when you first got into comedy, that the, the, the three cities that let San you Francisco, know you were alive. San Francisco. If I was like, all right, I'm gonna do San Francisco, Denver, the comedy works. I heard always heard was unbelievable. Cap City in Austin, DC Improv, Comedy Cellar in New York. Those are the ones that I heard that were like, you know. Have you been? You do the comedy cellar a lot? No, I've never done the comedy cellar in New York, but you know those are the ones that I've always heard were unbelievable. Is that the ones? I mean, like, like no, no. My question to you is like, when I went to Boston, when mm -hmm. I got a recommendation to play a club outside of Boston, I knew I was going to get somewhere, mm -hmm. like comedy wise. Like they didn't know who I was in Montreal. This was a pivotal city for me. There's yeah. always those pivotal cities where you when you're starting out. Yeah, that's the question. Like what's... Chicago and Zany's in Chicago. I really? built an audience up there. I remember selling out there f before anywhere else. The show took place in Chicago, and then I think that that's where my audience got biggest, fastest. I like that club. You know, the downtown one's cool. I really like that one, but that's a fun. That was like my first big area. Zany's in Chicago. Boston's was good. Boston was great. I remember when I did the Wilbur, I was excited about that. That was yeah, a fun. I was excited. Yeah. He got me excited about it. I, that was a good you know, one. I just, uh, there's one part of this thing when you hate when the business becomes involved. You like the purity of just, you, yeah. you just want to go to the store and do that $15 set and yep. get out of there and not have to worry about a check or if it was sold out or not sold out and who's pissed and who's not pissed. Well, well, for me, the reason why I like I was excited to do the for him to, for Joey to do the Wilbur was because I went there as a kid. Like that's the big theater in Boston. Yeah. Like well, what big? Did you guys do like a big theater in Jersey or something that was like with, that you went to as a kid? That was pretty cool. I mean the Coliseum, but no one ever Dice I think did the Coliseum. No, I'm like, did you Long do Island. anything? Have have you, have you gone back home? Oh, Governors on Long Island. They put me on their Comedy Wall of Fame from Long Island which I thought was really cool I like that club too I like that club yeah um, that was like that was the home club that my parents would go see comedy at when I first got it, moved to LA I had to go to New York for something this is such a weird it was a weird trip I went to New York 
I was supposed to showcase at Governor's. It was like a Tuesday night, but then the manager called me and said, you know what, it's a dark club. It had become fucked up for a while, and mm -hmm. those guys took it over and saved yeah. it again and stuff. But that was a weird trip because I turned down that. I turned down another showcase of like the comic strip. Like this manager I had knew that comedy thing, New York City. Uh -huh. But he also told me to make a tape of myself to win stand up while I was here and drop it off at HBO that they're casting a show called The Sopranos. And I remember going, like, okay, so why would I go to a song about singers? <laughs> I was like, fuck that shit. I'm not going down there. <laughs> I knew you at the store when you were auditioning your ass off. Yeah. And being number two. Always number two. For like a year. You were going in and making a screen test. They'd take you to lunch, Fuck. rub your feet. You, you met the president. You, you used to sign the paperwork that says how much money you're going to make before you go in there. Remember that last audition? Yes. You got to sign that yes. paper. So that way, in case you know you, they like you, they can't you know, negotiate then. So. You knew. You were like, fuck, here we go. It's either this or nothing. <laughs> Let's go do it. Him and I, we went fuck. through like a year of this auditioning hell, and we would talk to each other every night at the comedy store about the audition, the casting director. Which ones who, we liked. Who which was ones there. We yep. What did we do? This was a different time for auditioning than what's going on right now. Yeah, I mean, I really don't. I haven't done it for a little bit, but the pilot season this year is going to be interesting. I heard you don't really test in front of the audience, like in front of the people anymore. Sometimes I heard you do it on tape, which is a different thing. It's nerve wracking to like go in there and do it in front of them. Listen, call me and let me know what time on Friday afternoon. <laughs> Let's make it close to Wait. one o'clock. Yep. Give me the fucking sides on Wednesday. Let me smoke a fucking 20, and I'll, I'll get back to you Friday at 1. <laughs> Watch me go to work. Go ahead, call some names in there, and I guarantee you'll have my headshot on the wall. I don't know if you'll give me the job for practical matters. for Whatever, maybe, yeah. Nobody knows who I am, whatever, but trust me, that's what I know how to do. That's what I got really good at. I got so good at it that I got addicted to booking but not wanting to shoot. When they call me for wardrobe, <laughs> I go, God damn it. <laughs> <clears throat> and so were you. You got addicted to it for a while. You really got into it. The acting, the producer's yeah. sessions, the yep. second session. Fuck, the second sessions, yeah. And I remember saying to you, it's a game of numbers. And it's so weird how it was like it was like you lost, in your mind, it seemed like you lost 100 jobs in a row. Oof. And all of a sudden, boom, FX called, and there you were for yep. six seasons. You know? Yep. It's unbelievable. But yeah, those those years of just being like, I went, I got to this level. This year, I didn't book one. The next year, you book a pilot, doesn't go. Just you know, the whole thing where you're like, I'm in the room, trying the best I can, trying to figure it out as I go along. Who who we would see in the rooms, who we would test for what roles. I remember Julie, Julie Ashton bringing both of us in. Oh, right now you should be a mind reader, because that's all I can think about right now is Julie Ashton. Yeah. Like, when I think about my comedy career, three pilots, <coughs> four pilots she put me in. Yeah, she's one the best. Of them, one of them at 5 in the afternoon. <laughs> Call time was 7, 1500, go to Fox, NYPD 2063. That didn't have a chance in hell. <laughs> you understand me? Rocket ships in New York, <laughs> people getting shot by lasers. I was a newspaper guy. Good luck. Oh, my God. I think these stars... Get how many stars did I have? I had one star. That's all you need. Trust it's me. amazing. It's uh, I would, I think till today, Julie still calls me and. I hope to see her. Sixteen years later. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That we've been working for that lady for sixteen years. Everything that happened with me, she called to say, "Hey, we're good. I love you. She's a good woman." Let me see. I booked Lewis. She booked me in Lewis, whatever's pilot. Oh, yeah? She booked me in NYPD 2069. That's amazing. That that she, show. she booked me in uh, Happy Hour. Oh, really? Then they cut me out after the pilot. Tanks of shit that they were. <laughs> Tanks of shit, those people. Now I see them around, and they can't even look me in the eyeball. And shit. They, had a, <laughs> they were improv actors, dog. Two of them were commercial actors. 
Now they're fucking the five people in that show, and they couldn't hire the right janitor. Finally, they had to bring Uncle Joey to school him <laughs> on the school of comedy, <laughs> and they their fucking jaws dropped. And at that time, at that time, I was that good already on stage. I had done the longest yeah. yard. There's nothing to be fucking. You guys are fucking amateurs <laughs> compared to what the fucking dungeons I've been. You know what I'm saying? I remember the the uh, the longest yard. Everyone coming out after hanging out with us at the comedy store that was in the movie and saying how unbelievably fucking funny you were the entire time down there. Oh, I was killing, everyone, killing those everyone. motherfuckers. Killing everyone. I was killing. I was in You Mexico. were gone. Where were you guys? New Mexico? New Mexico. In New Mexico for like five days, I just watched. Mm -hmm. Listen, like God blessed me. It was whoever. They called me down there and I got to tell you something. I was kind of pissed. Cause after I got down there and looked at the schedule, like, you're not even shooting until next week. Yeah, what, what am I here for? But they were giving me per diem, like yep. a buck a day. Mm -hmm. They had me in fucking the Hotel Santa Fe, which is nice. where Lucio Ball, that's where everybody goes, Brad Pitt, that's the best there is. That's yep. Indians, fucking <laughs> tremendous food, you know, just tremendous yeah. fucking food. <coughs> they had me in that room for fucking seven days before I did anything. So for the first three or four days, I went to this down there. You know, uh, motherfuckers mm -hmm. like us. I put, you gotta I hang smoked out. a number. Yep. I brought See what them, the vibe I is. I brought a notepad. I brought my sides over them just to make believe I was going over my sides, but not really. <laughs> I'm making notes to what the fuck I'm seeing. How you're shooting this? How he's working with the actors? I was, you know, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Wait, think I was doing. I was doing one line per fucking thing before that. Yeah. My first scene was going to be like a fucking eight-liner yeah. in an ensemble with eight gorillas talking at one time. That's like a... Yeah. What's that first line I do? Uh, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, tr trio? Yeah. What the fuck's a trio? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was it, dog. And all of a sudden, there was eight people. I'd never done that before. Yep. What do you think? Somebody teaches you how to do that? They teach you how to do me and you. I'm New York City. I can do... Like, I love getting interviewed by the cops. That's my number one job. You got a guy getting interviewed by the cops, I'm not going yeah. brand new at that. That's how good I am at that. You know, but we were both fighting for our lives, trying to get acting jobs. Yep. Anything. Movies. We had conversations about shit at night. And I... By that point, I had figured out it was fucking... wasn't even about your performance. It was just about... There was so many mitigating factors. Variables, different ways. And it didn't matter what, ha you know, just luck of the thing that worked out at the right time. The stars always have to be aligned. Yeah. You know? Joe, you always talk about focus. So why why can't you, why, why didn't you just focus all of your energies on stand-up? Like, why are you even worrying about acting? Because at that <clears throat> point, my stand-up was going nowhere. My stand-up was going nowhere, and I figured out that Montreal didn't want me. There was no comedy agents wanting me. There was no comedy ma managers that spoke to me. But if I could act, I could go through the back door. By the time they catch up with my stand-up, my stand-up would be ready for them. So if I could act, little by little. See, like I told you or somebody else in this town, as a young comic, you come here. You ain't dick. You could be the funniest guy at all those open mics. They're going to promote you to be a regular at the store. You ain't dick to you book a commercial. Yep. That's how I remember it. Okay, because tell them why. Because now you become viable. Yeah. That's who you become. You're letting me know I'm at home one night. I own the improv in Brea. You've been bugging me for a year to do a guest spot. You're still watching commercials at You're this point. You're still watching commercials. It's 1130. You're stoned. And there's Steve Renazizi on a fucking Motorola commercial during the 11 o'clock news. Holy shit, I'm yeah. going to book him. He's one of those shit weekends that we can't get rid of. You know, and they'll give you an MC spot Yep. because they know now that you might go somewhere. Mm -hmm. You just became somebody by booking that commercial. It's like being part of a club. That's it. When I booked the Taco Bell commercial, it was all over. Like, people were talking to me. I booked the pilot for CBS. Nobody knew about it. Yep. Even you know, if you don't talk? Like, if you don't talk, you're cool? It's still yeah, good. yeah. McDonald's was my first commercial. I booked the McDonald's How commercial. How long did it take you to book a commercial in those days? I booked it in 2005, so four years, three and a half years. How often were we going on auditions? I mean, the first year it was like, they, they barely, they send you out on like one every, if you didn't book it right away, like one a month, 
and then and then you know you get like you get a callback or a couple callbacks, and then before you know it, you're they're like you're in callbacks all the time, and then you book one, then you go, you know, then they're like, all right. I remember Judah Freelander booked like eighty-seven commercials. Yeah, like I'm that's before he became. Then they take you serious, and they yeah. go, "Okay, let's." I've seen you before. Haven't I seen you? Yeah. Now you hop over from commercial actor mm -hmm. to real actor, which is tough sometimes. A lot of people get like that AT and T guy. You'll never see, you'll see him in another Sprint commercial. Yep. But you'll never see him in a movie opposite Jacques Cousteau or fucking Johnny Bananas or something like that. <laughs> It's crazy how I knew that I would eventually, like everything, I would get one line, one line, one line. Then I went on a three-liner tear for a while. And then I went on a five-liner only with credits rolling. Yep. The first, I went on a three-movie tear where the credits ran through me in the first fucking five minutes of the movie. I remember going from commercials. I had done two commercials, and then I booked a, a guest star on the show called Kitchen Confidential with Bradley Cooper. It was a Fox show. And I was going to play a banker who was running out on a check, like a Wall Street guy. And he was like ran the restaurant, so he would run after me and call the cops. So it was one like one scene, but four lines, and then I run out the door. So I I remember hanging out on set and trying to see what the difference is it between is it's the same thing as a commercial. I only done a commercial, you know, they didn't treat you very well. So then I did this, and they're covering angles and this and that. And the director's like more Wait, is it, is talking it, to you. And is this like, the oh, reality shit. show, like the reenactment? No, no, no. This was a real scripted show. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so he would, you know, like just trying to learn about the differences. Like, what's the next level going to be like? All right, this is television. This is what this feels like. It's different than commercials. They kind of have more money, take more time on things. They kind of move it differently. So I remember going from that to that and kind of learning the level as I got there. You know? How long did it take you to get the league? Your that was in 2009. So it took so you nine years. Eight, of, yeah, I've done a couple pilots. Years. I did one show that went for like 12 episodes in 2006. And then a couple pilots that didn't go after that. Then that Paul Blart movie was between that two. That was great. Because that was another one. The I, there, first in one, Boston, yeah. for three months we shoot the movie. I get there. I have like 10-day gaps. You know, but, you know, my girlfriend would come out and fly out and hang out, you know, so it was great, like, hanging out in the hotel. But, yeah, those big breaks are fun. But Kevin used to give us all this shit. The Burlington Mall, right? The Burlington Mall. He would yeah. give us... Um, legal Seafoods right on the, the That's main. right. Oh. We used to fucking eat there. Dude, I grew, up at, I grew up at that Legal Seafoods in the high top seats right at the front. It was the best job because we would... Uh, they realized because the mall was still open, we had to shoot Kevin stuff at night. So I had like businessman hours. My call time wasn't until noon. And then I would work till 8, be home, back at the hotel by 8.30, then nice dinner, you know, and then get into the night, whatever I wanted to do. Have long stretches off, four or five days off. It was fucking great. And they just paid you to run a film. It was awesome. That and then the league. It was a different... I get I I just started getting calls about a week and a half ago. People were like, "Hey, come here. Mm -hmm. have you been going out for pilot season?" Well, they go, "I didn't even know it was pilot season." Yeah, just started. And uh, I was, in, I'm like, at this point, I'm not even concerned anymore. I used to concern myself. I think I gave up about five years ago, six years ago. I finally said, "This is the reality of it." Mm -hmm. Unless I write a show, or somebody writes me in from the very beginning. A producer that believes in me, this ain't gonna happen. I don't want to go with no half with and then book it. Then you're too funny for him. So I replace you with fucking White Johnny, <laughs> and there you are, and they're fucking <laughs> friends. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. And that's a pe you know, that's part of the business. A lot of great people. Listen, Joe Rogan got the role because Ray Romano got fired. Mm -hmm. How fucking crazy is that, sir? You figure it out. Le so, didn't Leah Remini get what, something on Friends and then yeah <coughs> really fought, yeah something like that I feel that's what happened she was in, she was on the original Friends cast maybe you know someone always gets fired at the table read those table reads they don't do them for to just hear everything out loud they're doing it because I remember when I sat down on my first one ever Kurt Fuller who was playing the dad on the show. It's like old, an old but character actor, Ghostbusters 2, right? You've seen him all over the place. He turns and he looks at me, he goes, how do you feel? I'm like, great, I'm excited about this. He's like, you know, someone always just give it your all. 
because someone always gets fired. One of us is going to be gone after this fucking thing. And he was right. They fired one of the dudes after the show. And, and, you know, you find out on the way to the your car. That's how quick it happens. You, you, you're you done with the bagel after everyone says hello. Great job, everyone. You walk towards your car. By the time you get to your car, your agent's on the phone. Hey, we got to talk. What happened in there? <laughs> Jesus. And, and she, she auditioned for Monica. Yeah. But she didn't get it. Oh. She didn't get it. I fucking got fired from a movie in Jamaica, which I didn't care. And they were under, they were, they was a SAG movie, but they didn't really get the contract. And SAG, nobody sent the SAG rep to fucking Jamaica. It was like a nudist colony. And what else did I get fired from? I got fired from something else. A movie that I got with a bunch of fucking mooks. I didn't want to do it. And I just called them and said, I'm done. Done. And I go, you're fired. Okay, fuck it. But then, one of my f- most fucking infamous findings that nobody knows about is I got fired from a Telemundo show. <laughs> what? From a Cuban Telemundo show. And guess what? About two years ago, I'm in the park with my daughter and my wife. We're walking around the park, and the guy sees me and goes, Hello, how are you? And all of a sudden, he goes, Can I talk to you for a second? I just want you to know I never saw you again after that time when they fired. You had nothing to do with me. One of the producers just did not like you. And I was like, okay, thank you for telling me 18 years later, which I never lost nothing. They paid for my after. Oh, really? It was $1,000 after. Yeah, $1,000 was they paid join. me or something. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was like 98. I went down to the audition on a Monday. I guess my Spanish got away with it. But at the table read, Fuck. at the, what is that, at the blocking? Yeah. I just ate the big dick. And then they had a, a minute of pause, and these Cubans started talking, you know. And I'm like, what part of it? Where are you from? And they're like, this place. And, and these were all these Cubans that were high level, that thought they were high level. No, I didn't grow up in Union City. We grew up in 914, Rockland County, because... My father didn't want to be around Cubans. Those type of mm-hmm. motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That was weird. Fuck those motherfuckers. What's up, dog? What are you looking at me? Are you still going through changes? No, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm hot. Are you sweating? I'm well, sweating. I'm always sweating. It's like I'm definitely sweating. Let me give some now. shout outs and we'll get you out of here. Alex Wiley in the house. My man Austin Myers, my little brother there, making it happen. Stephen Kelly, TSP, Bud, and Roach. My main man, One by One Podcast, Bobby Sharon and Crystal, Chris Murphy, Andrew Nan Diaz, and Chris Trent in the motherfucking house. Also, while I got you, let me tell you something. Tell them about CISO, Lee. Oh, I love CISO. Okay, so here's the deal. They have all the great comedy you want. So I, I like specials. So I know they have uh, Joey. I know they have Stan Hope. I know they have a couple more coming up, which are pretty great. Um... And but what I really like is they have all of, and I like Parks and Recreation. They have that Rory they, Scoville specials on there too. Rory Scoville specials on there. They have Roy Kill Martin specials on there. I, what, what I'm what I'm really looking forward to seeing is that uh, Paul F. Tompkins. He has a show on there. I want to I want to see that when I I I'm, they I I'm going through their catalog and I'm just really impressed with all the stuff they have. Well, I'm happy that you like it, brother, because I love it too. I'm happy I I chose them. Stop settling for open mic comedy when the legends are at your fingertips. CISO puts you on the guest list for exclusive comedy shows from legendary comics and today's top talent with new exclusive specials from Nick DiPaolo and Uncle Joey, myself, Doug Stanhope, and the new special from Nick. You don't have to stand in line and shell out 30 bucks at your local comedy club to see us. CISO has exclusive specials from them and many more that you can enjoy from your couch on your favorite device. Plus, the drink minimum is up to you. You understand me? Nobody bothers you. Nobody knows nothing, all right? With CISO, you get unlimited access to CISO original series, next day, late night, hilarious stand-up specials, binge-worthy classics, including 42 42 seasons of Saturday Night Live, including the pilot, the entire Monty Python collection, the It Crowd, and much, much more. 
With CISO, you get binge worth classics, British cult comedy, original series like Harmon Quest and Bajillion Dollar Properties, not to mention the entire SNL library, including new episodes the day after they air. Do me a favor. Ready for the punchline? CISO is three ninety nine per month. No joke. Three ninety nine per month for all the comedy you want, anytime, anywhere, ad free. Access CISO content from anywhere, anytime using iOS, Android, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV stations, Window, and Xbox Live. But guess what? This is what I'm going to do. Just go to CISO.com right now. Sign up for one month free with promo code. You ready? Joey at checkout. Who's better than you? Again, this is the best offer CISO has going right now, all right? I can take care of you. One month of free of laughing your ass off comedy, including Uncle Joey at CISO by using promo code Joey, J O E Y. That's CISO.com spelled S E E S O.com. Promo code Joey. CISO.com. Promo code Joey. All right? And you get to hang out with Uncle Joey. Do me a favor. Go over there. Press the button. Watch the special. Watch Nick DiPaolo. Watch Laurie Kim Martin. Learn something about comedy from these people. Not from me. I got bad habits. Anyway. Back to my main man, Steve Renazizi, up on Long Island. When did you get the comedy you're in, Steve Renazizi? After college. I was uh, wanted to perform every night, so I didn't started writing jokes, and I was like, I'm going to try open mics. Went to New York Comedy Club, did the open mic there a little bit. And what year was this? Nine two thousand. Oh, okay, I yeah. was way gone from New York Comedy Club. I was lingering there yeah. in '93. Oh, really? It's back now. I heard it's pretty nice. There's so much comedy in New York right now. When you go there, if you call five clubs, they'll put you up. Mm-hmm. You know, there's tons of action in New York. You could do five, yeah, six man. clubs a night, I five different spots. Man, I'm too old. How many spots do you, would you do in a night and be like, oh, I'm, it's too much? Three. Three. But that to be fun. Yeah, three I good ones. Three. I don't care if there's 60 people. Yeah, as long as they're fun. I don't care. The first one's going to bomb. I want to bomb the first one because I got two to redeem myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't want to laugh? I don't give a fuck. I got three more like you. Can you do three hour shows a night now? Would you? Mm, I know. Between the reefer, the age, oh. the memory. Listen, one of the worst things on stage is when you're saying a joke and you don't know if you said that, that joke, joke before. The joke, the, the show before, or, or you've already said it already. I know that's happened to me Listen, before. Bro, let me tell you something. That's I was too at much. the I was at the Miami Improv, Tuesday through Sunday, with three shows on Saturday. If anybody went through the training, I earned it, okay? They had the improv in the late 90s got this bug. Three shows. Yeah. Three shows. And the late one st- started an hour late. What headline of this 42 minutes on a Saturday? <laughs> you got the sold out crowds. Yeah, I'm going to keep it tight. The late show would start at one. Those people are hammered. Now you got to do another fucking show. Yep. <clears throat> you wouldn't get out of there till three. On Sunday night, you're at the bar waiting to go up. Your central nervous system <laughs> no, it's terrible. is shot. You don't want to even say your fucking jokes. And guess what? You got to do your fucking thing, get a check, go to your hotel room, and go back. Because you got to fly to L.A., do laundry, feed the cat, clean the litter <laughs> box, and leave on Tuesday morning and do it all over again in San Antonio. Oh, actually. fuck. Three shows on Saturday. I man. did three shows in Columbus at the Funny Bone on St. Patrick's Day. It was a Saturday. I did three shows. The third show was that one of those ones where I was like, have I told this joke before? Did that's I just terrible. Start? That's that's. Are they, nuts. you know, because maybe you're like, are they are they laughing? I feel like they're laughing like they heard it before and they're laughing at me. Lee, you think you're going crazy for a minute? It's that quick that you you get to, as you're saying the joke, you don't know if they're laughing because you're fucked up. Yep. Sometimes I eat a star up there, Lee. <laughs> it's the second show. I got two three stars in me, dog. My mind stops a floating. You know, the second show already, you prove your point in the first show. So the second show, I'm going to take a couple fucking jabs. I'm going to take some detours. <laughs> yep. I'm going to take you down some dark streets because it's the 11 o'clock show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's so and, much fun. That's and I like show. doing that because then I go, oof, I didn't do any of those jokes. Yep. Thank Freedom. fucking God. 
I didn't have to do any of those jokes all over again. I'm sitting up there going, did I do this joke? Did I do this joke? It's 11 o'clock at night. I've been up since 7. My first joint was at 7.30. What are your odds? Nobody could withstand that memory thing at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Nobody thing. can smoke what I smoke all day and show up at 11 and do two shows. No. Not too many people. Could. Most people, the second show, that, that camera hits you. When that fucking, you get on that stage, and depending on how the audience is, you get instant anxiety sometimes for me, man. I fought it a little bit this year, and I'm okay with it now. The store gives it to me. Yeah. When I go to the store sometimes, as I'm walking up those steps, if I eat an edible, I forget, and I run up those steps, and I get a little anxiety at the six steps. Mm -hmm. And it takes me to a different planet. I got to sit in Mitzi's chair and <laughs> let my nerves come down. How many seasons did the fucking league go? We went seven. You loved it? Loved doing it. Where did you shoot? In On location in the valley, usually. And then a couple t days downtown sometimes. The bar was downtown that we shot at. Some office stuff downtown. But yeah, valley. It was a blast. I loved doing it. it was, I like going to work, you know? I like the, you know, it was the same crew, same people for the most part. It was fun. But, yeah, you know. Would you want to do it again? I would like to do a sh show as, I mean, I would love to do a show as fun as that. Another six, seven year run would be fun on another fun show. How fun would it be to get on Law and Order now and be one of the cops? Steve Brothers, easy oh. hometown guy. Just, yeah. Three year contract, this fucking uh, a junior, Detective, junior, junior. Detective Donnelly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, bro, that's a dream right there. I mean, being an investor like Steve Sharippa landed another one on Blue Bloods. God oh, bless really? that guy. Yeah. God bless him. Yeah. God bless him. That's all. You that's just it. bounce to another one then. That's it. Once a show ends, you take a year off, you spend some of that Guinness, you hide some of it, <laughs> you buy some shoes, and you tell your agent, listen, cocksucker, there's some show out there up. waiting for me. Put some writer together. I know you got another writer on staff. You got something on staff. You got somebody over there. Write them in. Well, I think, didn't you play a DA on the league? Yeah, I played a lawyer. So that's it. Yeah, yeah I could do it again. You. Yeah, experience. Fuck yeah. A DA on Law and Order. Assistant, yeah, man, yeah. 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 yeah, one of those Chicago shows. Chicago yeah. Law. They'll make next. Fuck yeah. I'll do that. Isn't I don't that, know. It's, it'd be fun. If you make it fun. I mean, you as long what, as it's man, not. The last couple times I've worked, except Marin, like I worked network television, I wasn't feeling it. No? <coughs> I wasn't feeling it. Why? It wasn't like, uh, I used to be excited about doing network television. Dog, in the beginning, I got thrown to the wolves. I did a couple of those shows that were live. I went from fucking doing co-stars to doing a live mad TV with people in the audience. Are you fucking crazy? When did I do Juilliard? <laughs> Remind me. When did I, did you ever, when did you ever go to a yeah. play and you see me in Juilliard? You know, these people don't understand what comedy store comics. You know what, bro? I may have felonies. I snorted blow. You know what I'm saying? I had an ex-wife. It's tough to un let these people understand that we're comedy store comics. Yeah. We're there from the core, from the 1145 spots. We played tricks on people. We lit what's-his-name on fire in the bathroom. Mugzilla. No, yeah, yeah, what's-his-name. <laughs> what's-his-name, you know. You got your dick sucked down there. You got drunk <laughs> as a motherfucker Fucker, down yeah. there. Passed out. Did back you live there. in the house? Huh? Did no, I never live lived in the house? house. No. You had friends that were lost now down there. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a cop. Sometimes I feel bad about my comedy and shit. I'm like, wait, this is like, Mitzi made me a fucking regular. I don't know what the fuck. You bitches better step back and shit. <laughs> shit. Yeah, I'm I feel 20, the same way. Yeah, like. You know, I remember, proud. I remember like going on Mad TV and them telling me what I got to do and me going home and going, I better call my agent in the morning and tell him that I'm sick as a dog and I can't do this. And then I, I would always go back to like, whoa, 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 whoa. I followed fucking, what's his name? Not A.J. Jamal. Is that his name? AJ? Yeah, there's A.J. Jamal, smooth black comedian, which with, is so funny. With dreads? No. But, you know, I was following Don Marrera and getting buried yeah. in the main room, getting buried, and then going into no confidence at the 1145 spot in the original room, which in those days was tighter. 
it was more more gladiator type. Mm -hmm. There were more savages in there. They come up from the fucking boroughs of Orange County to watch comedy. <laughs> now it's a lot of more tourists, you know. It's so famous now because of podcasts and stuff. It's famous everywhere. It, I think that's what it is. Every people make trips now. I've talked to audience members who make trips me too, there me too, me that too. are just solely there because they want to meet you and podcast they come on people. Business, and, it's it's fucking amazing. They come on business. Yeah, they check in at the st uh, not the standard. Uh, yeah, the standard down there. Where somewhere close to over there, and they walk and they walk mm -hmm. to the restaurants mm -hmm. and they go to sushi and then they come back to the comedy store. And it's great to know that people listen to us all over the fucking world and this translates. Yep. What we're doing translates. You're starting a podcast. I am. I start, actually it launches next, a week from tomorrow. What's the name of the podcast? Hear Me This Book with Steve Ren is easy. I don't read, I don't really read books or have read all the books I'm supposed to have read. So I'm going to have guests on, tell me about their favorite book. We'll talk about it, why they read it, you know, and then we'll just jump off from a conversation from there. You want to practice on Uncle Joey real quick? <laughs> Book? You have you, you got a book that you think a ton you? Of books. What book would you would you pick? I'd love to have you on. The, the, what, 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 what book do you want me to read? He's he's been telling me to read a book for like the past. Yeah, what book did you suggest I to want him? Him to read the War of Art. The War of Art. By Stephen Pressfield. Stephen Pressfield. It talks about resistance and what makes you not want to do the things that are going to lead you to a better life. How old is it? It's been around a couple of years. He wrote a couple movies and stuff. Real interesting story, but he's one of us that got sick and tired of getting beat up. Uh -huh. and he wrote, and he figured out what is what stops you from doing what you're supposed to do. It's an interesting book. But the other day I was looking at this fucking book I got. This is one of those books that I read that I had to put down a couple of times. It was so scary. And I read some great books. One of my favorite books is on Wings of Eagle. The story of fucking your boy there from Who? Texas. The one that ran for president with the red hair and the big years when we were kids. Ross Perot? Yeah. That's a badass book. <laughs> that's Trump's uncle. Nobody knows it yet. Nobody's <laughs> no that's Ross Perot. I do. I remember like being like, what is that guy's deal? He was in the debates. They let him in like the big debates. And he was throwing heat. He kept saying, America, these guys are paying for this with yeah. your money. I'm paying for this with my money. <laughs> yeah, God. yeah. he was ran but paid for his you, own. You know what, bro? If you read, he was so modest. And his publicity people never said, read my book. I got it out there for free. Really? Just send me, your send me your address. I'm going to send you my book. And you tell me if you don't want me president of your country. And I was read. in prison, dog. I didn't know what to do. And for some reason, I took this book off the shelf. And when they moved me, I kept the book. And I remember being there one night and listening to fucking black people yelling all night and shit. And in the middle of this, there was like a light. And I opened up the book and I said, I read like the first 10 pages. And for some reason, it just took me somewhere else. And the next day, I couldn't wait to wake up to read it in the light. And it was basically about a guy who made a bunch of fucking Gitas with this company, and then they went to Iran, and then they got captured. So they came back to the States, and they had captured like four of the office members, and then he went to Kissinger and talked to Kissinger. Jesus. But he made a promise to the employees' families that they would be home for Christmas dinner. You know, Perot's crazy. So when Kissinger said, we can't really go in there, you're on your own, this motherfucker went and hired Marlon Brando from Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Some crazy fucking dude that chopped go three million get... heads. No. To train his men, computer people, whatever, engineers, uh -huh. to bond together to go save the other workers. And they took a plane over there, they broke down the location, and this army commando taught these fucking guys, these guys like Lee, <laughs> And guys like you, how to fucking kill in 10 days. They really? Went, they went over, they got a building just like it, and they practiced taking over the building where the guys were. With regular people? 10 regular guys. They like Robin Hood. They had to keep it going, yep. They went in there, they got the four people out. Tremendous dog. Ross Perot made his promise. People dude, he looks like, a little, like a little geek. Doesn't matter. And that dude like got, an IT guy. That dude got pockets. 
Oh, deep pockets, day. oil no, money. He, yeah, he was. I, I remember at that time reading what he was worth and what he's worth. I remember, Dan, I remember, I remember Danny Carvey doing it on Saturday Night Live. Oh, please, he was fucking. Nuts. They're gonna wild me for president. But he just. America just wasn't. No, no, they weren't ready for a they third were, party guy. No, 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 no. Some crazy dude. Doug, he was ready to blow. He was saying it. I wouldn't take that stuff from nobody. Me, I just press a button. That's it. Once you say that on TV, well, yeah, yeah. people are like, "Yeah," and some people in California are like, uh, "Press a button." Well, let's do that. Let's do that book on the podcast. No, but there's another book that you. Like. All right, it's called Murder Machine. <laughs> It's all about the Roy DeMeo crew. Who? Roy DeMeo crew. This sounds like a Providence, Boston crew. No. No? They were out of Brooklyn, out of Canarsie. <laughs> and their main thing was fucking stealing cars, changing the vins, changing the history, and sending the cars to Iran and all those countries. And no matter what the car was, they would get five G's per car, Fords, whatever it was. They were shipping over thousands of cars a week. What, in shipping containers and stuff? Shipping containers and shit. And they had crews of guys that would go out at night and look for particular orders, special orders. I mean, it was a... a, a, a it was, and then Canarsie is known for ch chop shops mm -hmm. and body shops. So the pizzas they didn't need went out to those guys. But Roy DeMeo had chopped into a... Those people that make videos, like if I make a movie, you duplicate them. Oh, um, bootlegs. He, he had loaned the guy money, and they were bootlegging porno and making a ton of money. So Roy the Mayo got it with them. He killed the dude. No, no, Roy the Mayo was a savage. <laughs> he killed him for porn duplication. <laughs> por porn, yeah, the guy told him no. I don't want the partner. Fucking killed him. Right, he became um, the movie. Just, this guy was a fucking animal. How much are duplicated? But he was given tribute. To this fucking high ranking Gambino captain that didn't even have any soldiers. Like, this guy just kept them in pork chops. But what people didn't know was that Roy DeMeo lent money and he also sold coke. And But his main business was murder. And he had these six <laughs> dudes. He had these, he had these six dudes that would hang out at this bar, Club Gemini. Creepy fucking bar. But next to it, they had an apartment. And what their specialty was, what they carried on to. I mean, they went to John Gotti and said, listen, we want Roy DeMeo gone. And John Gotti said, what are you asking me for? Like, <laughs> so yeah, I don't want a I don't, I'm, not, I'm not fucking with Nobody, that. nobody. To this day, I forget who the fuck killed. Oh, the high-ranking captain, because that was the only guy he would talk to. So the, this is his story? And what he would do, what his fucking main thing was. This is, this is when... You know, man, all that shit's a fucking fantasy. And I knew it was a fantasy as a young guy. These people that come up to you, listen, if you give this guy money, you're with him. Really? I'm a Cuban guy. They don't want my money. They just want my money to fucking tell me I got that spickeroo paying me 200 a week. You know, that's yeah. all bullshit. But this guy, they were doing drugs. They were fucking stealing cars. They were making money, man. But when he got an inclination that you did something against him, he'd invite you to a party. And he go, you want to do some blow? Sure, let's go next door. I got this cocaine that just came off the Colombian fucking mule. He'd take you in, and as you walked in, one of them jumped out naked and stabbed you. Oh, my so God. They stabbed you. Then the other guy shot you, and they put a fucking towel around your head, and they dragged you to the what? tub. Like a NASCAR pit crew. And just hung fucking hung murder. It was a, they were a murder machine. <laughs> they put you in the tub. Drain your blood, hang you upside down, drain your fucking blood, and then they go and start the pots. The, That's my nightmare tonight. While you, <laughs> while you were fucking draining, they go cut the lettuce and the fucking tomatoes <laughs> and the whole thing. Why? Then they'd make a sauce, and by the time the sauce was done, they go in the tub, they get you, drain you, and they cut you into fucking pieces and put you into little garbage bags. And put you in one big garbage can, and that night they take you around to different neighborhoods and just dump three bags of your body in their hair, a head here, rest here. They were doing it to fucking everybody, dog. And that was this. That was this thing, murder. And Fuck that, yeah, if you're that good at it. <coughs> and that's where that dude came in, that crazy fucking dude, the Ice Man. That's who oh, he came yeah. in the mob through. Oh my god, Roy DeMeo. That's why they were the murder machine. It's a fucked up book. 
All right. I love books, dog. I'm I know. I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm not starting to read a little bit more. Nothing better than dope and fucking reading a good book. You don't have to go back like every time and read pages over again to I'm remember? One or two pages. You know, our comprehension. My, was not, my comprehension was never that good in school. I always had to yeah. read everything three times. Imagine now, what you do is you go for quality. Three or four pages at a time, show the fucking thing. <laughs> Before you start thinking of your girlfriend in high school, how you used to finger <laughs> yeah, her. And that's the thing. I'm going off on tangents. I got to my dry cleaners. I got to go. Yeah. I got to go to Vermont this week. I got no tickets sold. They want me to, you know, that's what happens when you read at our age. Uh, that's now. what I'm, well, I'm trying I'm, to clear my mind. I'll be no, 40 you're, this you're, year. You're yeah. young still, but there's so much on your mind those days of, though, I couldn't wait to get on a plane and take your fucking sneakers off. And, yeah. Take a book out and go. I got four hours mm -hmm. and 14 minutes. Nobody's going to call. I don't really give a fuck about an audition or an email. Can't do nothing up in fucking yeah. the sky here. Get it done. And you read 50 good pages of a book, and all of a sudden you put a notebook next to you, and while you're reading, you think of jokes. Maybe a new segue. Yeah, something like that. It's amazing because you're exercising your coconut, yeah. you know? Yep. So I'm going to have people on and, and do books that I haven't read. I'm looking forward to it. What's your list of books that you're interested in reading? I mean, there there are his like Great Gatsby, I've, ones that like everyone's read, books like that. But then like science fiction books, I'm not really into that. I want to have some people do that, some science fiction stuff, autobiographies of people I don't know. Doesn't really matter as long as someone is, is Silence into the, of the book. Lambs, another one of my favorites. Really? Cujo I read in prison. Tremendous. When I first read Cujo in prison, I couldn't sleep for like three nights. I was addicted. What's that about? Cujo Stephen King about the dog. The oh, yeah, played. the dog one. Crazy shit. You know, crazy how he fucks with your mind, that dude. Yeah, it that's fucked me up. A, that's always a, a finger in the ass. Uh, Silence of the Lambs is something that is a masterpiece because I've watched the movie 20 fucking times plus. And I've read the book five times, six times, and it's the only book ever that is exactly like the movie. Fuck. That, that's There's just a I, lot I, of interesting just, shit out there. Yeah. All those years on the road, when you come down from blow, you gotta get your mind back in shape. I would go to those Borders books. This is way before fucking you could read online and shit. Mm -hmm. I dropped 100 bucks in books. Six or seven books. Yeah, I never did that. I got to do that. A biography, uh, 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 mobster one. Uh, I haven't read since school. Yeah. Since I was like, I. Yeah. They since told I me I had to read this. Exactly, and I, 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 I got through an, an entire British. Which is, you okay? Yeah. No. An entire British literature course without reading a book. The class was all yeah. discussion, so I would, I would just talk about discussion I ended up getting like a B plus in the class but they're like 600 page books I still have them but I have had like, I've never even opened one of them I also want to thank our boy for the ball he gave you Bob Lalingus oh my god Bob yes. Lalingus gave me a 700 fucking page book what is it about the three lives of Jimmy Page oh really are you, you know, into it I'm tremendously into it. But what what got, part are you into now? I'm part of... No, no, no. Am I into it? No. Oh. I need three fucking three-hour flights. Yeah. I, and I got them. Yep. I got them. That's I say, right. It's, I mean, it's this fucking thick. I don't even think it'll go to security. It's this fucking thick, dog. That's going to be fun. It's sitting there, and every day I look past it, I read the inside cover, and I go, wow. Can't wait. This is going to be fucking crazy, man. But it's, you know, it's not like the old days. I'd be in, you know, I was in Miami two weeks of the shot. There's no show. No. Monday, Tuesday. What do you think you do? You put the TV on medium, you put CNN, mm -hmm. and you read. Yeah. You, you smoke dope on the balcony, you eat a little Cuban food. Where uh, you at this weekend when I see you? Phoenix. Phoenix, yeah. How much more are you traveling? Talk Phoenix, then the weekend after, uh, I'm in Denver at the Comedy Works downtown. Then the weekend after Charlotte at the Comedy Zone, and then I'm taking a little while off. Those are the, like the three hitters club. Though. Boom, boom, boom! I'm doing them yeah. the next three weeks. Those are I, how, I don't know how. How have you not? You've drank like six waters. I have to pee so bad. I drank three. What do you think you're dealing with? I, it's I'm, unbelievable. I'm Cuban Marine trained. It's amazing. There was a time I listen. One time I had an ounce of coke. 
I was paranoid to go to the bathroom and let the dog out. Everybody got trained that weekend. Mm-hmm. You hold it in like a soldier. You Jesus. know what I'm saying? I have to fucking piss I'm like a bed. fucking shark. You want to go in there when I read the ads and you come back? I just want to talk about what's going on with comedy real quick. Sure. You shooting a special soon? What's going on with you? I mean, I'm on the road right You're now. You're a funny motherfucker. I love you. I love, I love, you love too, that buddy. You, I love what you did. I saw you as a young kid. You had your doubts and all of a sudden, bam. You got on that show and you're on the league and you're fucking standing next to people who matter and it's not how many people you shoot, it's who you shoot. That's no, right, so buddy. You're one of us. I you love were you. A fighter for a long I time. I love you. Go and Pete. I thank you for having I'll me. I'll read on. this. So you're at the Phoenix. Fe- stand up live it. this week. Stand up live in Phoenix. In Thursday, Phoenix, yep. Friday, Saturday. Yep. No Thursday, show, one show, two. No, you're like me. No, yeah, no day. show Sunday. We it's Super Bowl too. Yeah, you're gonna sit there like I'm on a look at the A fucking <laughs> cracking jokes to a bunch of people got free tickets to the dinner. Get the fuck out of here. Can I, can I think of the lingus is for my gift? Real quick? Yeah, go ahead, brother. So, I just want to really show it off because it's the most amazing gift I've gotten in a long time. This is uh, I like a crystal baseball with some dirt from the game that it was David Ortiz's last game at Fenway Park. Oh, my God. Look at this thing. Here's the camera. If I drop this on the thing, I kill myself. Here we go. It's just the, it's the most amazing gift. Thank you so much. I I'm, I'm going to write you a thank you note, but thank you. Don't worry about nothing. I'm going to send them a little thing. I have to send them a thank you note. Let me talk to you guys about something. Lee, what do you think about your watch? I love my MEMT watch, man. It's it's uh, I have the black on black one. First of all, it looks great. That's the first thing that matters. Not, not only does it look great, but it's also lightweight. It doesn't get in the way when I'm working. I love this watch. It's just uh, it's my fa- the best watch I have. Listen, MBMT watches was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. The watchmaker's goal is to change the way consumers think about fashion by offering high quality minimalist products at revolutionary prices. With over five hundred thousand watches sold to customers in one hundred sixty countries around the world, MBMT watches has solidified itself on the world's fastest growing watch company okay listen valentine's day is coming it's tough you don't know what he wants you don't know what she wants but thanks to mvnt watches all the gift anxiety disappeared with the press of a button these watches make the perfect purchase for by anyone in your life guy or girl and remember they started only 95 dollars are you kidding me or what for 95 dollars you can have a beautiful watch on your wrist looking like a fucking doctor. You've heard me talk about MVMT watches and I'm sure you got yourself one, but it's Valentine's Day. Get yourself a nice watch for someone special. You know what I'm saying? You want the nookie, you gotta give a cookie. You follow me? Listen, go to MVMT, you can skip the crowds and standing in crazy lines at the mall and find the gift they'll love at the prices that beat department stores, all right? Movement watches start at $95 at department store. You're looking at $400 to $500. Bucks, all right. Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup and provide the best possible price. Classic design, quality construct- construction, and styled minimalism. Over 500,000 watches sold in 160 countries. All right. Do me a favor right now. These watches are tremendous. You're going to love how they look on your wrist. I'm going to give you 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash church. This watch has a real clean design. Seriously, I've been getting compliments. People love Lee's watch. Now put it on. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash church. Again, you want a little nookie? You got to give her a cookie for Valentine's Day. Go to mvmtwatches.com dot com slash church join the movement also listen we're all different you're having a you're having bad nights lately you can't sleep you know night after night two people lay on the same bed but when it comes time to buy a new mattress only one gets their way until now introducing helix sleep where you can buy mattresses online customized for both of you for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands Go to helixsleep.com, answer a few questions based on four key preferences. Listen to me. And the result will be a custom sleep profile used to build the most comfortable mattress 
you'll never fucking sleep on, okay? Your mattress will arrive at your door in about a week, and shipping is 100% free. And for couples, Helix customizes each side of the mattress, personalized to suit each of your bodies the way you both sleep. Who's better than that? You're going to sleep better, okay? Helix customers report 30% improvement in overall sleep quality. you got 100 nights to try it. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for free and give you 100% refunds, no questions asked, okay? This is what everyone from GQ Magazine to Forbes, they're all talking about Helix Sleep. Go to helixsleep.com slash joey and get $50 off your order. Again, that's helixsleep.com slash joey and get a half a yard. That's $50 off your order. Again, helixsleep.com slash joey. I want to thank my man. Steve, my little brother, Renna Zizi. Uncle Joey. For coming on the show tonight and rocking us out. He's going to be in Phoenix. Don't forget, you fucking savages. I'll be at the Nashville Zanies Thursday, 8 o'clock. That's Love all that you club. need to know. One of my all time favorites. It's taken me like two years to go back. We're going deep this weekend. So do whatever you need to do. Get there. I don't know if I'm doing Charlotte. I don't know if I'm doing to Atlanta. I got so many weeks, and I got to focus on different things. You understand me? Thank you for having me on. You can oh, check please. out the podcast next week if you're uh, on the February 7th, All thing, uh, coming out All Things Comedy. Hear me this book with Steve Renazizi. Thank you, Uncle Joey. This is a blast. I love you. Listen, man, go listen to his podcast. You're going to love it. He's a great kid. This is a very interesting fucking concept. What the fuck? Take a chance. Columbus did. What else are you going to do in an hour and a half? Sit there and dream. Someday I'm going to do a podcast. Go fuck yourself. I want to thank Helix Sleep. I want to thank... Uh, what the fuck? MVMT Watches. I want to thank... Uh, CISO TV. What is it? Dot what, Lee? CISO, CISO, CISO.com. And I believe it's Joey. And you get one month free. Okay. CISO TV.com slash Joey. And you get one month for free. And I want to thank my my heart, my blood, on it.com. Remember, 10% off on supplements. What is it, Lee? Yeah, on it.com. Use promo code CHURCH to get 10% off. So it's promo code CHURCH. C H U R C H. All right. Listen, have a great day. We'll talk to you in two days. We had a great night with Steve Renazizi. Go watch him in Phoenix. If not, I'll see you in Nashville, cocksucker. Lee Syatt, who loves you more than me? Nobody. That's right, cocksuckers. Have a great day. Stay black and beautiful.